Hello, welcome to Tabletop Legends. Um, I tell you right now, this is a pre-recorded episode, so we are not going to be... Well, maybe some of you guys are in the Twitch chat watching along with the audience, but uh, this is all pre-recorded, so your, uh, your comments uh, have no effect on the course of history that is about to unfold before you. Um, this is episode 22, and we are rejoining the party uh, as they return to the, uh, the salon of the... Uh, order of the the collective of the arcane eye, uh, the group of wizards that have hired them on to take on relic hunting contracts. Uh, they have three relic hunting contracts which have been laid out before them, one from each of the members of the arcane eye. Uh, and now that they have sort of wrapped up their various uh, individual businesses within the city of Neveria, uh, finalizing everything with a sweet wagon heist uh, for uh, for the Moxham Trading and Mercantile Company. Uh, stealing back a, uh, a piece of company property that was first stolen from uh, from a Moxham caravan. Uh, so with that in their possession, they are returning to the uh, Collective of the Arcane Eyes apartments. Uh, they have a uh, quite delighted uh, Stanfield in tow with them. Uh, Walter, you have the original item that was, that was stolen that you were tasked with recovering. And uh, basically in the morning, you, uh, you just have to let let the wizards know what job you're taking, receive your advance payment, and uh, and hit the road. So it's up to you. Let's, we'll st I'll drop you guys right. Let's say you guys are, like, getting back to the apartment right now. Do I remember if they wanted it dropped off at this locale or if I need to drop off or bring somewhere else? Uh, the instruction did not specify for you to, like, bring it somewhere else. So it would be a pretty safe assumption that, like, once you've acquired it, just turn it into whatever... Moxham branch is, is nearby. Uh, it's about is... well, it's about like dinner time at this point. Okay. Uh, once everybody's back safe, I'm just gonna wander off towards and then just deposit it. Into the okay, e easy enough. You you kind of turn that into them. They don't really ask too many questions about it when you when you get there. Um, you. I will. Space. I will mention to them that there was another group that seemed intent on okay. bothering. Um, but barring, barring that, um, they were disposed of. <laughs> All right, bamboozled them real good. <laughs> there was a bear with a bamboozling of epic proportions <laughs> took place. Uh, all right, so as you guys are back at the uh, uh, twenty eight door set, Walter has gone off uh, to deposit the uh, the item that you guys were tasked with recovering, and uh, like I said, it's about dinner time. Um, both, uh, both Dimios and Namara Amara uh, are there. Um, Stanfield kind of goes off to change out of this crazy jester outfit you gave him and, and begin to prepare supper for everyone. Uh, Colin is elsewhere, either up in his rooms or up, perhaps up in the laboratory. Uh, the other two are sitting in the in the parlor when you guys get back. I will be retelling the dramatic tales of Stanford. Stanfield? Stanfield. Dramatic Tales. His involvement basically uh, amounted to like... That's all, folks. A sweet heel click uh, <laughs> because he got left out of the rest of the farm. But I'm going to make it sound like he <laughs> okay. was an integral part of the whole thing. <laughs> and pivotal player. <laughs> as they would say. Uh, Dimios kind of listens to all of this and he says, and... Are you... I do hope that you do not intend to have our... Our dear Stanfield uh, taking part in anything illegal. Uh, I would dearly hate to have to bail him out of uh, <laughs> jail. Especially at his age. I don't, I don't think it would agree with him. No, no. No, no. No, no, no. no. There, my, deal, my the illegality that occurred came from the folks throwing knives and we were just entertaining you. Yeah. Uh, Technically, the only law we broke was hold up traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, traffic laws like Walter tampered with, like, a public road, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> nobody noticed, so I guess it's probably... Yeah, common did a burrito cart. <laughs> you did common do a burrito cart. I paid that guy, though. <laughs> you did pay him, yeah. You, you paid him enough for a week. <laughs> no, he stole a burrito. <laughs> he did steal okay. a burrito. Okay. Sure a I week minus one burrito. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I don't think those were uh, guards from that company. I I think we interrupted a heist. <laughs> Interrupting a heist if it was also our heist? No, it's called doing a better heist. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ours was successful. They were much more amateurish. Uh, so Demius is kind of like, he's following this. If I understand this correctly, there was an original heist. Then your heist was to recover the originally heisted item. Yes. And during your heist, there was yet another heist taking place against the original heisters. Yes. Yes. On a related note, Mr. Dinius, there are a lot of papers with a lot of writing on it that would be implicating us in this situation right now if somebody were to come looking. Is there a way I can dispose of that without it possible to be mended again? Do you have a fireplace? <laughs> There's one, like, <laughs> three feet from you in here. You're in, like, the parlor. There is a fireplace in here. He's like, still, still, like, no, <laughs> focus. I'm definitely asking that regardless. <laughs> Don't carry the fireplace in there. He just goes... And then, like, a little <laughs> thing of flame, like, shoots. <laughs> and he casts, uh, well, with a precipitation can start a fire, right? He's yeah. just like, <laughs> and the fire... <laughs> My god, there was, <laughs> there was a fourth heist. So he stole Walter's brain. <laughs> it, would be, it would be a shame if uh, you were to be locked up for whatever this was before you even got to undertake one contract for us. We, did, we did invest a significant amount of, uh, amount of money in uh, hiring you all on, having you, having you sort out for us. Run yeah, stairs, sorry. grab... Just, like, the <laughs> sound of, like, tearing off the walls is just, like, a run down, like, with, like, an arm, like, a bundle of papers and, like, maps and just throw it into the fire. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so that that concluded. A um, couple of hours passed. Stanfield serves uh, serves everybody dinner, um, and as you guys are kind of wrapping up and, and preparing to uh, turn in for the night, um, uh, Namara says, "If you have no other business in the city, have you given thought to which contract you would like to undertake first? And I can't speak for the others, but uh, I certainly have given uh, some thought to it. Um, I think Master Copper Kettle's business uh, would be the mission I would like to undertake uh, first. Uh, what about the rest of you? Uh, yes, I. I'm not sure how old his letter was. Uh, he had told you his, the original letter that he got from his friend Bolus was about three months ago, and he has not heard from him since. And, and, and the man has not been, like, answering his, his correspondence since then. Which is why he's, like, a little, like, well, that's strange. M maybe just go, like, hey, go and see what's up. Yeah. That type of thing. Uh, it's, it's unlike him to go that long without, without replying to correspondence. You know, it's been, it's been some time. Okay. Yes, no, I... Also, like to help Mr. Hopkettle. Uh, she kind of nods. She's a perfectly reasonable course of action. Though I am greatly interested in what is happening in the Scardlands, they have been there for generations and they will be there still. And she kind of nods towards Dimios. Uh, Mr. Harkin is. A competent investigator, I am sure that he can handle himself until such a time as our friends here can head out there to assist him. Demio's kind of like, uh, certainly a fair enough assessment. I will, uh, I will have uh, arrangements made to procure you uh, transport uh, via the... Uh, Via the transit station, the teleportation uh, to the town of uh, Laguna. Till then, uh, it, says it, it may take, uh, depending on the, the amount of traffic through the transit station, it may take uh, a little bit of time to secure passage, but uh, in the event that we get lucky, I would get a good night's sleep, as uh, tomorrow may be the day to start your journey. 
right. Thank you. Um, any other business with any of these guys before I sort of like fast forward you guys into your, your quest here? Anything you need to talk to any of the, the wizards about? Um, Demios has been looking at your scale. Uh, I'm going to get that back before I leave. Okay. <laughs> so, when you before you guys are, are, are going to head out, you go at some point, presumably, and talk to Demios, and you go to retrieve that from him. He gives it back to you, and he says, um, I should like to study it a, a, a bit more to see if there is any uh, anything else that can be discovered, but I do have some information from the poor you must get He says, I have determined a few things uh, about this item. Uh, it says, uh, number one, the, the green coloration on it is not natural. Uh, an, alchemical, uh, an alchemical process was performed upon this scale uh, to turn it this color, whether to disguise it as more valuable, uh, more exotic looking. Uh, the natural color, uh, Colin, uh, I had Colin look at it a little bit. Uh, he's a little more well-versed in uh, alchemical solvents than I am. Uh, Colin believes the original color was, was brown. Uh, which would, uh, in fact, coincide with uh, what I believe uh, to be the, uh, the taxonomy of the creature which it came from, uh, which I believe I have identified. This scale, I am almost certain, comes from a common wyvern. Are you familiar with this creature, Master Keller? Uh, only in passing. It is a, uh, a, a reptilian... Uh, Believed to be descendant uh, or, or lesser form uh, of the, the great lizards, of, of, of course, dragons. Uh, they do not possess anything near the intelligence or the consciousness or magical abilities of their, uh, their more predominant uh, forebears, I suppose you could call them. Um, they are much, uh, much more in line with... Uh, beasts of burden that, that we would use. Uh, of course, beasts of burden with uh, enormous gnashing claws and, and ripping teeth and the ability to fly, uh, but beasts of burden nonetheless. Uh, I have heard rumors of them being uh, trained, raised from a young age and trained uh, to be ridden, uh, but this is, as far as I am aware, unconfirmed in any, uh, in any real sense. As to why a wyvern scale was uh, dyed green, and uh, you said it was handed to you by someone in a crowd? Yep. I cannot guess uh, as to that nature. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, the item is not magical in any way. Uh, it does not radiate an active, uh, an active uh, uh, enchantment on it of any sort that I can detect. Uh, it may be that Simply, I have not had enough time to study it, uh, but that is what I know for now. Uh, thank you. It's very interesting. And he kind of nods. He says, uh, "When you return from your uh, from your objective, I should uh, I should perhaps like to study it. Uh, you said that it grew warm when you uh, brought it in proximity to an item that you were carrying. Uh, uh, yeah, I, di I didn't have him hold it when I <coughs> yeah." Um, he said, I should perhaps like to, uh, to perform further studies on uh, this item uh, with your permission and uh, should you desire with your presence um, and, uh, and examine its relationship to this, uh, to this dagger that you carry. Uh, yeah, when we get back and we spend another couple of days in the city, I think that would be uh, a fun endeavor. Uh, informative, to say the least, I should hope. So, you know, he, he kind of gives you your scale back. Um, <coughs> you can see there is now a, a little, like, a little spot on it where, uh, like, he and Colin did something to one little corner of it where um, it's almost as if uh, it had been, like, painted or dyed and they, like, took some sort of a solvent to it that rubbed away the coloration. So that sort of, like, lustrous green sheen that it had in this one little patch is more of just, like, a muddy brown color. Um, you mm -hmm. know, where they, like... What? You ruined it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? They ruined it. Um, so this is like Statue of Liberty. Um, I mean, sort. Yeah, I mean, sort of. It's same same kind of idea where like it is one color and then it was like over time maybe. oxidized. Um, not necessarily over time. He seems he seems pretty sure that like something specific was done to it to 
to change, change its it. coloration to this rather than just like it didn't like rust out in the elements or anything. It was yeah. it was purposely altered to make it look green when in actuality its natural color is brown. Yeah. Um, anything else anybody else needs to do before um, heading out? Ask uh, if you learned anything further about the dagger. Which I have, because I got Which you got back. Um, so as, as far as they know with your dagger, um, basically your guys' hypothesis are pretty in line with, with what they have found. Um... It seems like these were probably tools enchanted specifically to be the tools of um, either an embalmer or like somebody who was involved in the work of preparing dead for burial. Um, so the, the kind of the knife, in conjunction with the knife that, that they know you have, which like cuts and then the wounds will close over, would be you know a way of uh, perhaps performing like autopsies or special like burial rites, preparing bodies for burial without leaving like scars upon the, the, the deceased. Um, as far as they can tell with that dagger when stabbed into something like very recently deceased there is there is some form of, of uh, necromantic magic infused with it so that experience that you had where like there was a dead like a recently dead fish and you stabbed the dead fish and the gem glowed purple there is some form of necromantic magic on this dagger that is transferring something from whatever the thing is into the dagger only for a very short time and then it dissipates. Uh, they really have no idea why this would be, what, what its purpose might be, or like what you could do with this once there was like something stored in there. Um, whether there's a way to, like, retrieve it or do something else with it. Otherwise, it just seems to, like, kind of... Whatever this gem is, this enchantment, can't hold this this energy in for much more than, like, an hour or so. Um, that's basically as far as they can figure. They have no real idea beyond that of, like, what the specific purpose might be. They assume it has something to do with ancient dwarven burial rites, but they, they really don't know what that would be. Um... And even, you know, even Colin, who is, you know, maybe the most versed of out, of, out of any of them, um, is like, eh. It's not something that is apparently, as far as he knows, continued anymore uh, within Dwarven society. What did you do with that ring that you had? I was just about to... Where, uh, where I, is yeah. that? Did you give that to them? I don't think I did. I think no, you I have, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna... Uh, uh, ALR is gonna be in bed, and he's gonna say, oh, no. oh god, right. Have his door start knocking on uh, Nula's door. What? 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 Nula. What? 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 Nula. Where's the ring? I go back in my bag. Should we have them study this? Do you also want the glowy rock? You want them to say that? I want it back. It's my glowy rock. Do you want them to study it while we're away? Sure. Shut up with the glowy rocks! People are trying to sleep! <laughs> Shut it! <laughs> uh, I will head up to the uh, laboratory. See if any of them are uh, you, it's, it's late at this point. You find, uh, much like Walter did, you find Colin up there kind of puttering about just doing stuff actually the one i was hoping to see so that uh, nice yeah way. you guys are starting to get the impression that uh colin's a bit of an insomniac um and i mean although as far as you can tell namara is like an inhuman person who you've not seen sleep or eat or do anything except drink tea yeah, and, be va- say- and be vaguely like <laughs> vaguely disconcerting since you guys have met her i'm pretty uh, sure she's a ghost <laughs> <laughs> house is haunted <laughs> Uh, but no, Colin is Colin is up there, and he kind of uh, kind of looks at you, and he says, "Oh!" And he looks at the clock, and he says, "Right, well, you're supposed to be here, I suppose, or everyone else in the house is dead already, and I've got no hope." Uh, do I know you? One twenty-four. I'm Alar. Goes to his book, flips through. Alar. Okay. Oh. So, did me a no-no. Did find an adventuring party. Great. You're one of them. Good to know. Oh, and he kind of looks as... I added a note here. Uh, you lot are about to look into Polis for me. Fantastic! 
What can I do for you at this late hour? Um, there are two things I would like you to study. One in particular, uh, because uh, this was recovered from a dwarven crypt. And, All right. Uh, and the uh, the sextant uh, who pr- uh, presided over the crypt uh, it was uh, stationed in is also a dwarf and uh, we promised that we would uh, return it from the relic hunters who stole it mm. uh, but return it what he wants to put it back he does um, but before doing so I would uh, because you yourself are a dwarf. Also, leaving it just there without knowledge of what properties it has seems wrong, and this this is a way to kind of split the balance. <laughs> he kind of, he sort of nods a little bit. He says, hey, let me uh, share a little bit of hey, let me look at the ring first. Let's, hey, let's, let, me, let me have a look at that before I start uh, pontificating on my opinions on dwarven society as it stands today he takes a look at the ring and kind of puts it down <coughs> you see him uh whereas like when you handed stuff to Demios before he you know he kind of did a thing where like his eyes went special mm-hmm. uh he actually uh pulls out a uh, my brand he uh, <laughs> he, t- <laughs> he takes out a uh kind of like a almost like a looks like a tackle box mm-hmm. except instead of like fishing stuff in it when he opens it up it's got all sorts of crazy like powders and crystals and, and like shavings of like metal and stuff um and he he like sprinkles a i just have this like huge idiot <laughs> on my face <laughs> sprinkles a uh um, like a ring of what almost looks like uh if gunpowder was a thing that you recognize it looks kind of like gunpowder mm-hmm. in a circle around this ring um he takes a few other uh couple of like different components um basically creating a small spell circle around this around this ring and with just a sort of like a muttered word he, he touches his uh, one of his fingers to the tip of this this spell circle that he's created and the the black powder around the ring from where his finger touch from where his finger touches goes like <laughs> very quickly like <laughs> burns up um, and there is sort of a you feel almost like a uh, like a pulse of Almost like a change in barometric pressure, just like out from this area, and he goes, "Oh, that's a neat little item. It's imbued with transmutation magic." Yeah, we noticed that it was able to uh, turn something into something else. Hey, uh, specifically stone. He says, "Well, it can do more than that, as far as I can tell." Uh, he says. Uh, he says, let me look in my uh, my sweet notes to find where, uh, <laughs> where I wrote this item down. <laughs> uh, uh, he says, I've seen I've seen something like this, not quite like this one. This is a this is like an older, quite an older version of this enchantment. Uh, an item, a more modern item like this, uh, would be called a ring of minor alchemy. Uh, he says, it's, it's actually pretty rare. This is a this is quite a valuable little item you found yourself in possession of. Uh, he says, it's imbued with transmutation magic, as you figured out. As you've also figured out, it can turn things into stone. Uh, it can it can do uh, other things. Uh, this one, as far as I can tell, uh, does have the ability to, uh, to transform uh, between a few different uh, types of material. Uh, I, I believe uh, wood, stone, iron, copper... Or, uh, this is an iffy one, you'd have to try it. Uh, silver, possibly. Uh, um, but silver is in silver for money, or silver is in silver for... Silver the material. Like, alchemical silver? Uh, no, probably not. Probably no. just uh, standard, uh, standard huh. silver. Um, it is... <coughs> so, any, any of those materials uh, can be transformed into any other of those materials uh now granted it's 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 not it's not like uh, uh, I, I don't know if you've uh, if you've got like the, the big dollar signs appearing in your eyes it's temporary um and you can only do uh you can only do a, a bit of material at a time usually with these rings you'd have to test it to see what the actual uh amount that this particular item could handle 
uh, but it's usually not more than like a cubic foot of material. Uh, and it, it will, it will, I don't know if you've noticed this in any of your tests, uh, it will revert back to its original state after a period of time. Um, it did, yes. I would, uh, <coughs> well, uh, here's my opinion, uh, if you want. I'd keep it. Uh, he says, the thing you need to understand about my people, hey, they suffered under the invariants, there's no doubt about that, suffered long, and dwarves have long memories. We can hold a grudge like you would not believe. But a lot of people suffered under the invariants, eh? And a lot of these kingdoms, they're trying to learn from the past, trying to grow, trying to recover what was lost in all those years of wars. My people long ago decided to shutter themselves in their settlements, cling to the old ways, bury their heads in the stone. That's why I left my home. That's why most dwarves who choose to leave the Yudjar Mountains do so. It's... This, this cleric, this, this sextant, sounds like a decent enough man if he's living, if he's living out of the, the mountains. He's obviously more progressive than some, but if he just have you stick it back in a crypt, I don't see what good that does anybody. I keep it, I'd use it. It's going to be a hell of a lot more useful to you in your adventures than it would be sitting with some long dead Bastard. It's just my opinion, eh? I can't tell you what to do. Certainly your own your own conscience needs to be your guide. Mm. <laughs> hey, you said you you pulled it out of a crypt. Yeah, so dwarven crypt, a uh, pre invarian uh fall of the Invarian Empire. Uh huh. if you like, I can show you some of the murals. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna spend some time mm -hmm. chasing. Oh, that's Interesting. And he, he has a little bit of an insight to provide you that these sort of these pictograms are uh, essentially uh, the way that dwarves honor um, departed who are like of some significance. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit difficult. You're kind of working from memory, so you don't, you know, you can't perfectly like represent them. As far as you can, as far as he can tell and as far as he gleans from what you show him, he is of the opinion that this, this was an individual who, uh, spent his life basically traveling around that region and working sort of as like, almost like an underground freedom fighter, um, helping to like support the dwarves of that region under the regime of the Invarians. Um, he gets the impression that he probably used this ring to some effect um, in that in that endeavor, which is kind of what made him sort of a... He was probably essentially like a folk hero of, of that era. Um, and uh, he says, that's, that's pretty interesting. And you say this was a... Uh, he, was, he was buried alone. Hey, not in a, like a communal crypt. Just him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, there was... There were dwarven ruins there uh, among the rebuilt uh, church. There was a shrine to Mathwin. Makes sense. Uh, which held the key to open this this crypt. There was also a uh, there was a statue there, and that uh, was apparently a defender for this crypt. But unfortunately, oh, shite. What we'll happened to it? The relic hunters that stole the ring destroyed it. He kind of like, he like puts his hands like, honestly, that's the best thing that could have happened. Really? They don't use them much anymore. It was very popular at that time. Because at that time, who's going to come into a dwarven crypt looking to mess about, except invariants, eh? Those defenders. 
they're like I don't know how to describe it. And they, 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 I'll say they, they, they don't think, they don't reason, eh? He says, uh, he says they, they're programmed for a task, they're taught a task, and they do that task without regard. He says, it's a word of advice, I Don't hesitate to destroy those if you come across them. They are way more likely to hurt somebody in this day and age that does not deserve it than to do what they were designed to do, which is protect the tomb. They don't differentiate between someone there trying to learn from the past, being respectful. It says, if you encounter it and it didn't attack you, it's probably because you you got lucky enough that you didn't touch the wrong thing. Uh, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> we didn't touch uh, the crypt at all. That's probably what uh, didn't cause it. He kind of like he gives like a shiver. He's like, Ugh. that thing being under that town. There's a well. Thank the deities that nobody got hurt before. It's better. Not every dwarf would agree with me. I. There are definitely some that would call it defiling a holy place of the highest order, but. As far as I'm concerned, those are dangerous. They were put there with good intentions, but those intentions are no longer valid. It is sad, though. He says, I... It's been a long... <laughs> it's been a long several hundred years. Things are different. It's just... He, he kind of kind of nasty. He says, you people are getting into this business on our behalf, delving into places. I've done it for years and years. People put things in these lost places. They built things a certain way, with a certain intention in mind. And sometimes that intention doesn't quite fit the passage of time understand yeah I think I do um, um, he kind of he looks at this says in any case I've blathered on about dwarves and my opinion on their politics long enough <clears throat> that's what the ring does do with it what you will keep it send it back whatever your heart tells you I'll speak with the group. We did promise to return the ring, and I am loath to uh, break a promise. Oh, before I forget, um, not a uh, no, uh, nothing so critical uh, or uh, requiring uh, your immediate attention. But um, if you can take the time to study this, it takes it. Shakes it. Oh, interesting. If I had to guess, uh, probably an artificer's creation. Uh, I doubt it does much more than shed a little bit of light, but I'll take a look at that for sure, for sure. I appreciate it. Just, <coughs> hey, well, you best go and get some sleep. It's going to be a long, long trip for you in the morning. Thank you, Master Captain Kettle. And now the name goes back to the Okay, so I'm assuming at this point everybody has kind of wrapped up what they needed to wrap up. Um, and we will jump ahead. Uh, so, <coughs> to refresh you guys, um, you are undertaking Colin Copper Kettle's mission. You are looking for his friend Bolus Trolleyweather. Um, Bolus is an old acquaintance of, of Colin's from before he acquired his curse. Um, so he is one of, like, an ever-dwindling few people still alive uh, as, like, they kind of age and, and pass on and, and things that Colin still can remember, um, having known him before his curse. Uh, Bolus keeps in correspondence with Colin. They kind of share research notes, um, and Bolus keeps an eye out for anything that he thinks might be able to help Colin with his uh, breaking his curse. About three months ago, Bolus sent a letter to Colin saying he had come across a tome that he thought might be of interest 
to Colin's attempt to break his memory curse. After that, Bolas went completely silent. He sent no further correspondence. He did not respond to any letters or uh, uh, messenger sparrows that, that, that uh, Colin has sent that way. Um, Colin did not present the issue to you guys as if he's, like, super, super concerned. Um, but he did, like, he notes that it's unlike Bolas to not respond for so long. So he basically just wants you guys to go... Find, go to Bolas's house um, near the uh, near the city of Laguna. See what's going on. Make sure everything's okay, and potentially bring that tome back with you to him to look at. Um, and actually, so you guys kind of go to bed that night. You you know you do your preparations. Um, it actually takes another three days before uh, the collective of the Arcane Eye is able to secure you guys a spot. Um, using the teleportation, uh, the city's teleportation ring, the travel to Laguna. Um, so you end up, like, having another couple of days to kill, um, you know, presumably doing your things. Uh, Nula, I, I am assuming you hunt around for those guards. Um, I'm going to be harassing Colin to see if he can get any further on the, uh, the sheet. I will, find, find I will assist readings. him on that. Sure, that's fine. You know, they, they work on that. You guys don't really make too much more progress. Uh, Nula, you're not able to actually find either... Uh, either of your buddies, um, and some of the some of the guards, uh, a couple of the guards, seem to like be expecting you when your inquiries come, um, and you find a very like sort of a very detached like professional like they'll answer questions that you might have that like a city guard might be obligated to answer directions to places things like that uh but you, you get it you get a kind of a sense that maybe like word of you is like spreading throughout the guard force uh throughout the city um and they they uh they seem to be a little like a little on edge as if uh they know that you did something that like upset their buddy elvin no um, so you don't actually make any more progress on your your, your kind of quest there. Um, <clears throat> but the day kind of finally arrives. Um, the the information that you were armed with, you, you spend that morning, you have to like re-go through the process of introducing yourselves to Colin mm -hmm. and, and like working through this. Uh, the information he is able to give you before you're able to go, um, he knows that uh, Bolas lives, uh, he lives in the town of uh, Laguna. But um, he, he does know that, that his like estate is a little bit outside the town. He has never been there, so he doesn't actually know like how to give you directions to it. You're going to have to like find somebody to like direct you there when you get there. Um, Did we get a letter of introduction? Person? What's that? No, sorry. Uh, yeah, he can, yeah, he can yeah. write you up a letter that says, like, basically writes you a letter that's like, Bolus. There with me, Colin. <laughs> Just like hands it to you guys. Uh, I have also purchased several pies. You have purchased several pies. You have pies. You don't think where we're going is gonna have pies. Uh, you do. You do know that good the, the ones in Nibiria. Uh, well, actually, from what you from what you learn, I mean, Nibiria is a pretty banging city, but uh, you do learn that, that Lagona Lagona is is a pretty upscale town pretty well to do. This, this guy nice. loves pies. You think he's going to play doing a place with shit pies? <laughs> Even if they're really good, if I imagine you get tired of the same ones over and over again. Um, Look, already. nothing else. It doesn't work out. We've got pies then. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a no landed one, person. No one can possibly lose. He's a landed person. I, I like, 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 so, like, he's, he's somebody of, like, sufficient wealth to have... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Safe. He's, okay. he, he actually, um... Uh, he got, like, a large inheritance. He's a halfling. He got a large inheritance from his parents when, when they passed. Um, and he has since uh, expanded that fortune through... Uh, he is a, He's, like, a big-time collector of um, artifacts and, like, tomes and things like that. He's, like, he's way big into, like, old stuff. And it's he, like, sells and trades. He swindled out of stuff with a great game, right? No, 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 no. He's he's oh. not. He's like way no. <laughs> okay. He's nowhere near this near near any of your uh, endeavors so far. Um, 
that was the horse card, right? That was the yep. horse card. Yes. Yeah. Horse card. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, like I said, it takes it takes about four days for the Arcane Eye to be able to secure a teleportation trip for you to Laguna. Um, uh, but at the appointed time, you guys do head. You head over to the Ambassador's Ward. Um, Stanfield is able to give you guys, like, he gives you guys some, like, directions, a little map to show you where to go. You head over to the Ambassador's Ward, um, where you are heading to the Neverian Transit Terminus. Um, Kel, you, you actually, like, have been near this before, as it is sort of in the same general vicinity as the library and both of the universities. Um, and as you guys approach, you see that this building is nestled between two, the two kind of slightly elevated compounds that, uh, that make up the arcane and material universities of Mythlinde. Um, and sort of at the low point between these, these two campuses is a single story building, which is shaped like a, uh, a solid ring, about 200 feet across. Um measured from like the interior wall of it um, and as you as you reach this building you guys actually kind of have to like walk about like a third away around the building looking for like an entrance um and what you come to is uh oh sorry um and so as you're like, like kind, of, kind of walking around um so you see this ring-shaped building and then inside this ring-shaped building uh you see what appears to be just like a like a big massive like boulder like a massive chunk of rock essentially um as far as you can tell it, it like it just takes up the entire space inside this this ring basically as if they had like built this single story ring shaped builder building around this like enormous rock um and it, it it actually rises um almost like 60 feet up above like the roof of the building. It's like a humongous piece of stone. Um, you eventually come around to what you, you deem as the front of the building. And, and you see that the ground has basically been excavated, uh, creating a ramp down uh, about two stories. Um, so you imagine like if this is like the ring of the building, uh, this ramp goes like this down underneath it. <coughs> um, there is a wide, like, paved cobblestone ramp, which leads down, uh, like, toward and then underneath the building. Um, you see carts, people on foot, kind of, like, coming and going through this area. Um, and then there are just carved stone steps on either side of this ramp. Um, so you kind of follow the flow of traffic down, uh, either via ramp or stairs, whichever, you know, whichever your preference is. <coughs> um, and... You go down about these like these two stories, these like looming carved stone walls on either side of you. You end up, you pass, you see you pass underneath where the building is below, underneath this like stone, essentially like archway slash tunnel. And the chamber you enter as you pass beneath, um, about like 30, 20 to 30 feet above you is like the ground level. Um, you see that the chamber beneath is also circular. There's like an entire area underneath what was above that you actually gauge to be like a little larger than the diameter of the building above um it is it is also circular it is arranged so that there is like a um a wide ring around the very like the very outside that has been laid out in all manner of like bays and waiting areas where you see like carts and goods and people are being like staged to kind of make their transit um and the uh, moving inward a little bit there's all all forms of like processing stations with um like dozens and dozens of of individuals in these uniforms that are like doing paperwork and checking in with people and like moving people through lines it's very like very tsa you know the they're like is for loading and yeah <laughs> Um, Please tell me they all look like the guy from the DMV. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one uh, of them. Internal screaming. <laughs> uh, luckily, they, they are not all that guy from the DMV. Um, uh, you see kind of, a, it's just a mixture. Mostly humans, a couple of have elves scattered here or there. Uh, sort of your standard Neverian fare. Um, 
the uh, so all of this is organized um, kind of this like as I said very TSA sort of like organized chaos in this like the outer portion of the area where um, all of this is being staged to move like around and then into the center portion of this large area which is wide open and you uh, uh, you see like uh, basically there's like an empty space in this in this area and it's all sort of like vaguely illuminated um, uh, so there are um, even though you see this illumination there's no torches in this room even though it's it's underground um, the whole area is brightly lit by a glow coming from what you you kind of as you look towards the center area you see a uh, about a 15 foot diameter circular band of illumination centered exactly in the middle of the chamber um, as you look at it you have to blink away an almost optical illusion effect as instead of the far wall of the chamber within the confines of this ring of light you see a bright warm daylight streaming in from a chamber that seems to be constructed of red sandstone marked with regularly spaced open arches showing a clear blue sky beyond um so you kind of like are looking at this and after a second you sort of like blink away and y your brain shifts and makes this adjustment and you may you're able to make out the faintest ripple uh, in the air inside this illuminated band and you recognize it for what it is the glowing band is the border of an opening in the fabric of space showing you a completely different location on the other side you see a handful of individuals wearing bright lightweight garments one of whom you catch a brief glimpse glimpse of has a head entirely covered in a bright plume of magenta feathers with eyes placed for monocular vision on either side of their head and an elongated beak the group walks through the portal and a few a few moments later you hear a loud like shifting stone sound uh, and the portal winks out of existence as you make your way around the space following the signs and the instructions of officials who are busy making sure the transit station flows smoothly you get nearer to the center this process repeats several times a loud shifting of stone against stone the portal winking to life uh, in a uh, varying array of sizes, some smaller, some larger, uh, a group coming or going, and then <laughs> the portal winking out. You present your paperwork to one of the officials who directs you to a waiting area, uh, as there are a few more transits before your trip to Laguna is scheduled. You sit, and you have a much better view of the interior portion of this chamber, and you're able to see a few things from here. First, no matter where you have been in the chamber, as you have moved around this outer ring, going through this this staging process whenever the portal springs into life it is always as if it is faced directly at you and actually like if you have been moving at some point it's as if the portal is like turning to follow you uh basically as if like something about the viewing angle of this thing just just causes it to look like a circular two-dimensional sphere no matter where you're standing um the, the second thing, uh, as you look to the top of the chamber, uh, you see it's, it's, in fact, it is not closed, as you might first have thought. Top of the chamber, uh, you see the lip of the ground above, in this big ring. You can see the interior wall of that circular building from the outside. The wall is actually dotted with hundreds of portholes all around the interior of them, uh, out of which these, like, Thick metal cables extend, stringing across the space, forming like an enormous metal net. And that huge rock that you guys saw from above is resting, is, is like being held up by this massive metal net directly above the central portion of the chamber where like the portal is. Um, uh, I, I would like to okay uh so you, i mean you use the tech magic it's too far for you to be able to be in like be in range of it um because it's up yeah. um you get obviously when you detect magic as you're kind of in this area every time the portal comes on and off 
the whole area gets like like a radiation wash of magic like <laughs> fills the chamber. Um, but at least from here, you cannot see any magic coming off of the thing above. Yeah. Are you sure this is safe? No. This is absolutely safe. You sure? Yes. Why is your eye twitching, your lord? My eye is... Your eye is twitching. Why are your fingers crossed, eye. Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, we're gonna die! No, we're not! We're gonna go to Laguna. And we're gonna eat pie. You don't have to go to Laguna, I think, to do that. We could just... We <laughs> go just, to Kel's backpack! Yeah. <laughs> Pies! No, we're gonna go to Laguna, and then we're gonna eat pie. It's gonna be fine. Why is the rock in the net? My Why is anything anything? <laughs> don't ask questions. It's, this it's is better if you don't think about it. <laughs> this is probably oh, pre-fall of the Imbarian Empire magical construction. Look, here's how this is gonna go. We're gonna go through that portal. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get to Lagona. Mm-hmm. We're going to vomit. <laughs> our stomachs are going to be empty for pie. As It'll you guys fine. are kind of like <laughs> having this conversation, and you're sure you're basically sitting in a bunch of like sort of uncomfortable chairs, waiting for your turn to go through the portal. Uh, somebody in the in the group next to you actually leans uh, leans forward. They're they're a uh, small group of people. They're all wearing like uh, sort of like scholarly slash wizardly robes. Uh, there is one individual who is like way bigger than the others sitting with them, but who is just sort of like has their hands in their lap and is looking forward. But as you're like asking this question about this rock and you guys are having this conversation, uh, this individual leans forward and it is uh, kind of a, like a school teacher-y looking human man. Um, and he says, actually my dear, um, uh, he says, all of this is, uh, is relatively recent. Um, he says, uh, the function of the large rock, uh, well. Uh, is the crushes? Uh, well, unless in, unless you are an invading army, uh, no. Uh, the function of the large rock, of course, is uh, uh, in the event that a uh, an enemy force uh, were to gain the um, uh, planar coordinates of this particular portal uh, and attempt to um, say send their uh, their brigands to come slash up and burn and raise and, and pillage um, uh, from elsewhere outside of this station. Uh, the release on the, uh, the, the large net could be triggered, uh, and uh, well, the invading army would find themselves uh, s- thoroughly smashed beneath a quite enormous rock, uh, and the teleportation circle would be uh, no longer operable. Uh, it is uh, quite safe. Uh, it has been, uh, I believe this was built um, some 92 years ago? Don't quote me on that. Uh, it has never had to be used, thankfully. Uh, but it is there as a defensive measure. In case uh, someone were to try to siege the city via teleportation network, they could crush the entire complex uh, and protect the city from being invaded from within. See? Perfectly fine. A bit of a history lesson for you. Who checks the rope? Uh, he says, oh, that, I'm afraid I don't know that. He says, it is in fact not rope. It's, uh, as far as I'm aware, it is adamantine uh, cabling. Uh, it is uh, the strongest of materials uh, currently uh, known to modern technologies. All right, thanks, Bob. <laughs> he's like, he's like, anytime, anytime. Yeah. And um, well, as know. he says <laughs> that, as he says that, there is, uh, you hear, uh, kind of this like operator of this this machinery yells out, um, uh, nine thirty transit to Terra Libra, uh, and that group that you were talking to stands up, and they walk away from you. Thank you very much. The man kind of waves. He says, here, take this pie. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> we didn't poison it or anything. He says, it's okay. I'm an extremely accomplished wizard. I will detect poisons <laughs> before anyone eats it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. We're still die. <laughs> this group kind of walks away. These uh, sort of uh, rogue, wizardly looking fellows, about five of them, plus this like hulking figure, um, which as you see them get up and make their way towards the transit station, uh, this this large beefy figure reaches down and with one arm just like picks up uh, like a, a crate with a handle on it that is like easily the size like double the size of any of you guys just sort of like <clears throat> lifts this up and they walk into the center of this uh, <clears throat> this platform and there is a, a brief moment where you hear that <clears throat> and <clears throat> a portal. Um, not really much more than 
uh, a large door frame opens, um, and you see a uh, just kind of like a standard looking room beyond, and these individuals all begin to make their way through the portal, and uh, just as that huge like figure begins to go to like make his transit, he kind of turns back in your guy's direction, and as you see beneath his like robes and his hood as he looks at you, uh, what you see is not the face of uh, like a person, so much as it, it almost looks at first like it is like their head is made out of like an armored helmet um, that has these like two openings in it that are um, and imagine like the Iron Giant. Uh, it has these like sort of like irising glowing blue eyes that as he like turns and looks back at you, you see they like sort of iris to like half shut at the bottom in like an approximation of like <laughs> and he just kind of like gives you this look and like gives you guys a big wave and then turns and <laughs> through this portal and <laughs> it shuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought it was going to be Osiris. Uh, no, it's not Osiris. <laughs> I'm just relieved you didn't try to keep that metal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I didn't think about it. <laughs> Uh, so I will say none of you, uh, none of you have ever encountered an individual that looks like that before. Um, cool. They are gone uh, a moment later. Uh, the that same voice says, "Nine thirty-three transit to Laguna." That does. You guys stand up. <laughs> Steady. You are paladin of the radiant dawn. Who does not use this method of travel? Uh, so it is your First turn. <laughs> it is your turn to make the transit. You are directed out onto the central portion of the chamber, um, onto a small waiting platform where you just saw those other guys move to. The stone rumbling you've been hearing each time uh, the portal is reset turns out to be coming from the floor of the interior, interior of this ring. It is made out of hundreds of concentric stone rings, each inlaid with a metal band and carved with runes all, all the way around. You watch as you step onto this platform, the rings, they all revolve around each other, like hundreds of rings moving at once, until they come to a stop, and starting from the very center of the room, in a straight line leading from there, like towards where you guys are standing, a basically a row of runes illuminates. And as soon as the last one lights up, a portal pops into existence in the center of this chamber, and you see, like, um, a candle-lit, lamp-lit chamber beyond. And uh, the uh, the individual says, um, uh, you can see him, like, consulting a big book, and he says, <coughs> Fool's Errant Relic Hunting Operation, uh, 934, transit to Laguna, you may now transit. Attempt not to touch the boundary of the portal on the way through. Thank you. And, Sweet. Uh, All right. Well, I had string. Uh, and come on. Let's I go. Yes. Uh, let's. Lagona. <laughs> <laughs> is there an opposite of inspiration that I can give him for that? <laughs> that is twenty minutes. One demerit. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give you disadvantage on some roll that you make at some point tonight's session. Um. I'm like holding Kel's hand, but I have a feeling I'm just like accidentally <laughs> cutting off circulation. But she's like got him up here. She's been just like dangling. So his yeah. hands is like my, my shoulder, shoulder has been dislocated. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just going through a great big grin on my, my face. hand. Just powder. <laughs> um. All right. So everybody's going through. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. The it's like the cowardly lion. Right? <laughs> So all of this like lead up, uh, and the transit through the portal is, is as it turns out, is kind of dull. Uh, if there's there's nothing any more any more interesting happens than like a ten foot walk uh, in a straight line. You feel nothing. You feel no change. No like passing of the boundary. The only thing is just like one moment. You're in this massive transit termin in terminus in Neveria. And the next, you are in a small lamp lit chamber, sitting in front, uh, standing in front of an elderly gnome at a desk who has a massive ledger in front of him. You guys hear <laughs> as the portal disappears behind you, and the gnome looks up at you through his spectacles, and he says, Fools errant relic hunters! That's us. Mm -hmm. And nods, he says, Very good! Um, he gestures you over, there is a, there is a door. He says, 
up the stairs and out to exit the uh, uh, the transit station and enjoy your stay in Laguna. Thank you. Thank you very much, my good man. Still ever tell? <laughs> it's gone! Oh my god! I'm going to be holding it, rush outside, and then vomit. Okay. <laughs> uh, somebody, <laughs> somebody pulled my tail. <laughs> As you guys are um, starting to make your way out, uh, there is a, uh, a a large map on the wall, like before you would exit the uh, before you would exit the the chamber. Uh, and there, on that map, there is a uh, there's like a little painted dot. The you are here. Dot? That's like a you are here. Uh, that places you guys uh, right here in this building. Who? I let you guys look at it while I go outside and bump. <laughs> <sighs> so you guys kind of look at it, he says, <clears throat> and says hey, he sees you sort of looking at the map, and he says, oh, first time to Laguna. Uh, yes. Uh, Anything I can help direct you to? Uh, the Trolley Weather Estate? Charlie weather. Uh, we're told it's slightly outside of the city proper. I think I've heard the name, but I'm afraid I don't. I don't know that gentleman or or his uh, uh, the location of his estate. There are uh, a number uh, along the hills, along the the shores of the lake. You understand some of these uh, fancier mansions. Uh, just, uh, I'm afraid I can't help you there. That the best I can offer you is uh, probably to head into the town square and uh, ask around. Uh, maybe check in with some of the local businesses. I know uh, many of the estates uh, have uh, arrangements with uh, butchers, florists, tailors, things like that in town to have supplies brought out. Perhaps one of them could direct you. Most kind, thank you. Is there a good bookstore in town? Is, oh, yes! He says, if it's a bookstore you're after, right, right off the town square. Uh, Inkblot Books. Uh, Tilly. Uh, Tilly McNair is the uh, is the proprietor. Ooh, it's the finest bookstore in town. And what's your name, sir? I says, oh, uh, pardon me, how rude. Uh, my name is Dolmick. Well, Dolmick, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we'll see what we can do about trying to find the trolley others. Just head to the town square and start shouting. Um, <laughs> enjoy, your stay in, uh, enjoy your stay in Laguna. Thank you. Step outside. You're still dry and heaving. I hand you a uh, water skin. Here, wash him out that <laughs> He <Are> does. <laughs> I cannot stress enough how psychosomatic Newell's reaction to the, uh, to the translation is. Uh, he does, like, point you as you guys are getting to relief. So you are here. He does point you, like, hang a left here, hang a right at the main street. And the, the main... Uh, plaza of town is, is right there. The town square is a circle. The town square is... Hey, I realize, uh, so there may or may not have been a point when I was designing this, uh, this portion of the adventure where that was a town square, uh, and then I may have drawn the map and made it a plaza and then not changed my notes. Uh, or maybe, or maybe, maybe Dolmick has a rare condition where he doesn't know shapes. <laughs> and, uh, you're being, you're being very ableist right now, and I don't know if I like it. Uh, I'm gonna ask him before we leave if there are any specific laws that are any laws specific to this town that we should be aware of that might be different than the area. Oh boy, that's real suspicious. Uh, a group of people come to a transit station and immediately ask about the laws in the area. God uh, damn it, Walter! Says, I mean, your basic ones don't uh, don't kill people or steal things or cause a ruckus. Uh, yeah, maybe you should go now. <laughs> I, I think he was more <laughs> asking anything is, that is a less uncommon law than... He's like, no, I... Is there no magic Our employers have sent us to some weird places, and one of the towns we were literally not allowed to leave. And we got in a lot of trouble because we tried to leave. <laughs> yeah. is, uh, no, there's no laws like that is here. I, I do think there's some, some old ones on the book. Like, I, I, I don't... I don't think it is technically legal to uh, to take off your left shoe uh, at those? twilight, <laughs> but I don't think they enforce that anymore, so you're probably fine. Oh, thank the gods. Just obey the standard ones, and you Ooh. should be good to go. Thank yeah. God, because that's, that's the only time I take off my left shoe <laughs> is right at twilight. <laughs> that's true. 
Praise be the mystery. They call that the old left shoe big Crosby around here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what that was from. That was a that was, that a was from a pre-recorded episode, which which has not aired yet. See, which has, in the future. Which has not aired yet. <laughs> It'll be much funnier when you eventually find. I uh, hear the joke. He looks Maybe a little. He looks a little concerned as you guys leave. As like <laughs> the first thing like Walter did was like. <laughs> Are there any laws I need to know about in this town? <laughs> Magic might be like Walter. A little bit Walter. Illegal. Walter. Tat. Uh, can I poker face. go back in? Sure. He looks, up from, his, he looks up from his book again. Yes. Uh, have you seen this person? I showed the picture of Cory. Uh, I'm afraid I couldn't say so. I don't think so. Okay, I'm looking for them. Figured transit center oh, well, might uh, be useful. Well, uh, quite a few people go through here, and uh, well, I've been at this job for you know, nigh on 14 years now, so um, if, if they pass through here, I don't know that I've seen them. Okay, thank you. Okay, Perfect. good day. Um, well, hey. I told you so. <laughs> We're gonna have to go back through that. No, 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 no. It is two Fine, months. You can walk. Yeah, it is two months as the crow flies back. It's, to it's the one crew. month each way. So you you have you have saved a month. It's a month back if you go on foot. That sounds lovely. <laughs> it's nice knowing you. It's Nula. also like winter at yeah. this point. Yeah. Nula, it'll be fine. La la la, it's not <laughs> happening. La 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 la. Nula, we'll just blindfold you. Yeah, Nula, focus. This way, we'll give you a sensory and then memory. we're going to hang them right up there. <laughs> just leave you through, you won't know. Yeah. Uh, I would say, Nula, you are fairly quickly, like, distracted from your plight at having gone through the transit station as you guys start to walk through the town of Laguna. Uh, though it does seem, like, down, downright quaint compared to, like, the massive metropolis of Neveria, the, the town is beautiful. Um, you kind of walk down this street, you're heading following the directions towards the square that, uh, that Dolmet gave you. Um, sort of the, this, like, crisp, like, lake air smell fills your, fills your nose as you head out of the transit station and find yourselves on a cobblestone paved street lined with lovely brick and mortar townhomes. There are people out and about on the streets going about their business wrapped in sort of medium weight cloaks, scarves, gloves to ward off the cold. Uh, the weather is clear and sunny, uh, if it is a bit chilly today. Um, and you see there are neatly planted rows of trees in the median at the center of the wide street. A few have the last vestiges of vibrant red, orange, or yellow leaves yet to fall. Uh, the landscape you see above the treetops is an expanse of gently rolling hills to the north, east, and west. You can't see Lake Turnier from here, over the buildings. Um, but you can tell that it, it lays, like, to the south, as you just see kind of sky in a flat expanse that way. So. Yeah, so that's the lake. Um, the, town is, the town is lovely. Um, and you get the impression that, you know, like a month back during the height of leaf fall, this, this place would have been breathtaking. Um, it, it lives up to the, the hype that Colin said, that this is, like, a well-to-do little town. Um, you head up the street, you come, uh, you come to that town plaza after just a couple, it doesn't take you long, it's not a humongous town, it takes you only a minute or two of a couple minutes of walking to get to this town plaza. And the area is a wide open circular space with a uh, large fountain in the middle. Shops line the perimeter, um, perimeter of the plaza and carts or stalls with wares to sell encircle the outermost perimeter. There are people strolling about, shopping, conducting business, and the babble of, uh, you know, hundred voices, cheery voices, fill the air. Um, here are some of the things that you guys see. Uh, amongst the stalls, you see there is a stall selling fresh-baked bread, stall selling vegetables, stall selling wreaths of woven holly, uh, vine, and juniper, uh, like that you would hang on the door of your house. Um, you see a stand. There is a woman who is selling sketches and appears to be she has like a seat and a little like easel set up She's drawing she's doing like portraits for a fee for people um, <clears throat> Among the shops you see a flower shop uh, With a sign above the the door that reads the enchanted florist You see a butcher shop 
which has uh, Lorang Brothers painted on the window. You see uh, a general store that just says general store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, there is the bookshop that Dolmic mentioned to you, Inkblot Books, is tucked kind of into a corner in the uh, in the, the area here. Um, there is a shop uh, with a sign above it that says Caldwell Curios. Uh, and then there is a large inn and tavern that has a uh, a picture of um, two. Uh, it's like two guys in these sort of weird, like s almost outfits that like almost look like uniforms for like a weird sport. And one of them has like a like a long flat stick in his hand. Um, and the name of the the inn is the Daisy Cutter. Right. Heading to the butcher shop. Alrighty. I don't know what the others are doing, but... So what's everybody doing at this point? You can certainly split up if you want to like, check out like things. I would like to go find some Harvest Spice coffee. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to toss a couple copper at you. Find okay. me some tea. I'm going to check the bookstore first, and then uh, I'll yeah. probably go to the tavern and... All right. Uh, so you the you go to the bookstore. Obviously, I'll follow, I'll, I'll, I'll follow him to the bookstore first. I think we'll have coffee or tea. I'm gonna okay. Go to the Lula, you might uh, want to think about talking to this tallest lady. To uh, get a better time. Yeah. There is a lady doing portraits on the street. I go to her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with you. No, you gonna go with Nuba? Okay. I am sorry. We all. Yes. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Yeah, I have. Then like... after that, I want to go to the the Caldwell Curio. Okay. Cool. All right. So you kind of go with them. Uh, you as you like. On your way there, uh, you you do see uh, there is a little kind of little corner uh, looks like cafe coffee shop um, called uh, Constellation Rams and uh, Rams like R A M S Constellation Rams one word. It's a Starbucks pun in case anybody missed it. Yes, <laughs> we did. <laughs> I'm going home. He definitely did. Uh, it's like everybody missed my Wolverine pun before. Wolverine pun. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you, no, I will absolutely go there and ask for yep. a harvest you, spice coffee. Uh, you spend a few minutes like um, they don't know what you're talking about, so you spend a few minutes explaining it to them. Make a uh, make me a performance check. No, make me a. <laughs> I, if it's charisma, just roll the d20. I don't know what kind of check this is. It's a five. <laughs> if, 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 if it's performance, oh god, no! This is the this is the copy that I said for level twenty. That is not. The same I guess person. I guess let's call this an intelligence check. Oh, okay, we'll just say so. Okay. Um. You know what? Uh, this is too, this is like too good a thing to to like let your bad roll screw up. So you like explain <laughs> this to them. You explain this to them, uh, and you basically end up with like they they get like a brew that you you basically walk them through adding like nutmeg and cinnamon and like allspice and different like things to, um, and you like they like brew this up for you. They you know they give you a, a mug and like one of them behind the, the counter tries and like oh my god this is delicious. And within, like, a few minutes, they're, like, making this up, and everybody's, like, clambering for this, and it's, like, everybody's, like, well, this is so good! Uh, and Walter it, has invented pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> I'm just picturing uh, Alar, <laughs> he's first. stepping into the butcher shop, there's just a crowd of people behind him. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this, is, this is intellectual property of Mox and Trade right. and Merck uh, Company. Uh, <laughs> Rob pops in, he's like, if you like that, you might like these uh, sheepskin boots. Here, logs, get them right here, they're called logs. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I, I glance out from the uh, doorway of the butcher shop. <laughs> hey, did you get my tea? Uh, we'll also take some tea for... My That's tea. fine, you eat your tea. I'm uh, a big lug and I make them lugs. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're headed to the, the butcher, butcher shop, you're yeah. headed to the bookstore, you're headed to the lady with the whatever, and you were going to going the curios. I okay. going with her and then... Curious. You looked at her, she is just finishing a... She's working in, like, charcoal. She's finishing, like, a charcoal portraiture of... Um, seems like there's, there's like a little, uh, little girl and like her parents are kind of standing off to the side have paid for this little like portraiture of her. She kind of finishes it up, she, she hands it to them, the parents, uh, hand her a couple of silver pieces. She kind of nods and thanks them and turns to you. Um, and she's, oh, hello. Hello. Um, 
can I interest you? She gestures at her, like, wall of, she's got, like, some landscapes, some other, like, figure drawings up. Uh, can I interest you in any of my wares, or, or perhaps a, a portrait? Uh, this may be an odd request. I have been looking for my friend for a really long time, and I keep showing everyone a picture of her, but my picture's not, I mean, your picture's much better than the picture I had. <laughs> yes. Kel like reaches up and like I, I stands there. there. Just, like, oh, okay. <laughs> reaches out for yeah, probably <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of she looks. She's oh um well I I can certainly give it a try if you're interested. Yeah. yeah. So, of course we'll come sit. Um she asks for your your picture. Who is the D twenty? Oh sorry, Kel has the golden D twenty for Grand Theft. Oh Walter oh, has Walter. the golden D twenty for Grand Theft Wagon. Oh well. I'm... Well, we'll just consider. We're we'll just gonna hand wave that when we're gonna have. That you use the golden D twenty for inventing for inventing the pumpkin spice latte. Okay. <laughs> I, I, would just, I would just like to make sure that it's attributed to lots of trading. Okay. So you can get some like proceeds out of that. Uh, so you kind of sit down. Well, she she takes your sketch. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she begins to draw. Um, meanwhile, we'll switch over to Alar. Uh, so you enter into this butcher shop. Uh, there are a few patrons in here. Um, there are two uh, kind of like large, dark-haired, sort of burly-looking humans behind the counter who uh, definitely appear to be related. Um, after a kind of a few minutes, uh, you walk up to the, uh, the counter, um, and the slightly shorter of the two kind of walks up to you and goes, Hey, how's it going? What can I get for you? Good oh, morning. Um, new to the city, I'm actually here on an errand. Um, Never been, so uh, I'm looking for the trolley weather state. All right, uh, there a particular reason, uh, particular reason why? There's no, hey, no, you know, no, no offense intended. Uh, we uh, we do a bit of business with uh, with uh, with Mr. Bolus, but uh, you know, I don't know how I feel about uh, just sending off any any guy that comes in here to his house. You know what I mean? Just, uh, completely, no offense, no offense. Completely. Understandable, absolutely understandable. Um, he keeps a correspondence with the gentleman in the Viria uh, Copper Kettle. And he kind of turns his, "Hey, uh, Nico, Copper Kettle, anything to you? Mean anything?" And uh, the, the his brother, who he, I think is, nah, never heard of him. No, oh. the two of them have uh, been corresponding back and forth, and. Uh, um, Mr. Trolleyweather hasn't written back. He uh, sent a message about uh, something that might have interested Mr. Copper Kettle, but uh, that was the last uh, communication that they had. That was several months ago. Hmm. Uh, make a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. You're making it sound like they were <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Is this guy's name Rogers by chance? No, but he does have a kind of a similar regional accent to Rogers, uh, which we have sort of established is the Volandin, uh, certain portions of Voland. Fifteen? Okay. He kind of turns towards his, uh, uh, this individual you're talking to, turns towards his brother, he says, Hey, uh, Nico! And, uh, Nico is in the process of, like, trying to serve somebody else. He's like, Oh, my God, what?! <laughs> He's like, Take it easy, first of all. He says, Trolley weather house. Anything, uh, anything weird with the, uh, deliveries? And, uh, his brother's like, Ah. And he goes, Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, he kind of, he t turns back and he says, He says, Uh, I'll tell you this. He says, I'm not personally comfortable sharing, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Bolus's personal details with you. He says, You can, uh, Talk to, uh, head over to the general store. Uh, gentleman, uh, Jim Stepler is the head of the general store, runs the general store. Uh, he runs the parcel service in town. Uh, also, uh, group of us, group of us here, us, the, uh, the flower shop, a couple of the other shops. Uh, we got arrangements with a lot of these estates oh, yes, out on yes, the lakeside. Yes, uh, we coordinate all that through Jim. He, he runs the car, the, uh, the the carts that go out to the estates. Talk to him if he wants to tell you how to how to find the estate. That's his business. Uh, but uh, look, we're gonna, we're gonna stay out of it. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I just 
you know, you figure any big house, they're going to want uh, butchers, and they're going to want the best, and uh, a few shops. He says, speaking of which, here, try this. And he goes, and he, like, cuts off a piece of uh, what looks like a smoked sort of, like, cheese of some sort, mm-hmm. and he, like, hands it out to you on a little, like, piece of paper, mm-hmm. uh, and you eat it, and it's, like, banging. It's so good. <laughs> He's like, that is a, uh, I forget what our last name is. That is a Lorang Brothers uh, specialty. We make that We make that here in-house seasonally. Uh, he says, it's one of our best sellers. I'm going to be back on my way out <laughs> because this is going to make the house that I, I am uh, uh, staying in in Nuveria, this is going to make them go crazy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Lorang. He seems like he's like, He's like, uh, I, I, I figured he's, I figured as much. He says, well, uh, we'll put a wheel aside for you, Mr. Uh, uh, Cabot. Cabot. Sounds good. And he, he actually, at this point, he introduces himself as, um, Elric Lorang. So Elric and Nico Lorang are the two brothers that run this butcher shop. Okay. Sitting there munching mm-hmm. on a little slice of cheese. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's quite good. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, let's see, who who do we need to hit at this point? Are you, she's like sitting down waiting for this portrait. You said you were headed off towards that cur- curio shop? Do you, do you were you like waiting with, with me? Her? I'll, I'll wait if not. You can go. Okay. Uh, so we'll have, you, you'll kind of start to head to that. We'll, we'll go to the, uh, the bookshop now with Kel here. So you, uh, you head over to Ink Block Books. You were going to, right? Were you just trying to I, I, I am. I was just. This is all sort of happening simultaneously. So he's like, he's inventing the uh, pumpkin spice latte I as this is happening. A new empire. Here. <laughs> Are you su- like? Do you suddenly have a long scarf around your neck and just your pumpkin spice latte? I, mean, in your hand? I have the sky self. I can absolutely put like. Black frame glasses. Yep. On <laughs> people are like, people are like coming out of this this coffee shop and they're looking at each other like, oh my god, have you tried this? And they're like, oh my I god, mean, fall is life, you guys, <laughs> fall is life. I feel like we're in like Vale or like uh, Beverly Hills right now. It's pretty so like, like, it's pretty uh, yeah, like Colorado ski town ish, yeah. except it's you know lakeside. Man, um, yeah. Over at Inkwell uh, Inkblot Books, um, you head in. It is a. Uh, Decent sized bookshop um, looks to be pretty like uh, you know a lot of the bookshops you have been in in these little towns you've gone to so far have been like it's a lot of river fishing books. Uh, there's not there is not a river fishing section in this bookshop. This is like lake fishing. more like antiquities. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Lake fishing. No. no, this is more like antiquities and like collectors level books. This is a higher caliber of bookshop than you have been in before. Um, very neatly kept. The, all the shelves are like organized and labeled by you know kind of by section, and there is a uh, there is a halfling uh, halfling woman sitting um, behind a kind of like a, a you know front desk as as you come in, um, just writing something in a in, in a book. And she she looks up as you and talks. Oh, hello, dear. It's nice to meet you. Uh, my name's Kel. Oh, uh, pleasure you? to meet you, Kel. Uh, Tilly McNire. Uh, you know, I, sh- I should have known that. Uh, our friend at the transit station, uh, Dornick, told, told, uh, sent me this way. Oh, did he now? Uh, I am just coming from Niberia, and I'm looking for books that they might not have access to there, uh, as well as a couple of other subjects that are of personal interest. Certainly. Um, what are you looking for? Um, well, first off, uh, I have these six children's books that are by an author from this region. I was wondering if there were more of them. Uh, she kind of looks through and says, "Oh, those are very popular." Um, uh, she said, "I think I do have. Uh, I think I do have a handful of those in the uh, in the children's section." Yes. Uh, cool. I would love to get those. Sure. Uh, similarly, if you got anything on uh, local history. How local are we talking? Uh, local Laguna local? Local Mithlinde local? Uh, let's go with Laguna local. And uh, he's oh, we've got a we've got a handful of a uh, handful of books that have been written by a a, 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 a a gentleman that's that's lived in town most of his life on the uh, uh, sort of the history of the town, a uh, bit of a, a bit of a local lore, local legends type of book. Um, that's uh, she kind of points to us like a small display. 
um, uh, the, like a handful of books. This is like uh, Laguna uh, history. Uh, great. I would love to look at those. Uh, two more things. Uh, philosophy. Any local philosophers? Local philosophers? I'm afraid not local philosophers. I do have some philosophy books. I would love to look at those. All right. Then, uh, do you think you have anything on dragons? Uh, do I have Let's anything on dragons? Yep. <laughs> dragons? Easy. Slightly harder. Slightly harder. Go for the big ask. <laughs> Uh, she kind of looks through and she says, uh, well, let me, and she goes, uh, kind of around the back and she comes back with a large book that you see. She sets it down. Uh, you see the title on it, uh, just says The Fall. Um, and she kind of looks through this. She says, I can't rightly remember if the, if there are any references to dragons in here. It says, uh, terribly sorry. Uh, I, I think maybe there might be a reference to, to dragons in, in this book. It's uh, uh, it details the uh, the or at least in the author's opinion, the elements that led to the uh, the collapse of the Invarian Empire and the, uh, the the gritty wars that, that followed. It's a bit of a history uh, sort of collection. Just, there might there might be some dragons sort of towards the beginning. Um, during the, the, the Empire's fall. Um, okay. um, what about Wyverns? Wyverns? Uh, no, I don't think I've got anything on that particularly. Okay. That's a bit of a specialty subject. All right. Uh, we're, we're, we're certainly more of a, you know, the old collector's book. Um, <clears throat> she, uh, so, I mean, at this point you've got, she's got another, like, eight of those, essentially, like, golden books. Yep. <laughs> um, That'll run you. Uh, that'll run you one gold for the eight of those. Uh, Lagona, a history, will run you five gold. Oh, you guys did get uh, like as a group. You guys gather get like gathered. Uh, uh, what we say? They give you two hundred as a group on the way out. I think. So. I think that's right. Yep. So like you collectively got two hundred gold. You can certainly split them up yourself. Um. Philosophy books you can you can look through. We'll we'll give you like you can get some generic philosophy books if that's what you're looking for. Um, we'll we'll call that another like I don't know if you want to get like if you want to spend like ten gold on let's say three philosophy books. Um, the uh, the book the fall. Um, she like she kind of has that set aside. She says, you know, if you're a lot that's interested in uh, sort of history and historical items, I have another uh, another. Tome that uh, that might interest you, uh, uh, depending on your price range, of course. Um, she goes and retrieves another book called uh, "The Age of Reason." Uh, she says, uh, "This is a uh, this is an item I'm, I'm very very uh, proud to have acquired. It's uh, it's actually a, a history of the uh, the formation of the uh, the Ordinum Libri. I don't know if you're familiar with them at all." Uh, vaguely. She says, I, "I've got this. If it's if it's something that piques your interest as a as a lover of history, um, she um, sort of points at the uh, uh, the fall of the age of regions. Are, are you interested at all in either of these? Uh, that depends on how expensive they are." <laughs> uh, she says, "Well, uh, they are uh, they're eighty gold a piece." Um, and she says, "You bought a few other things. I could." I could be persuaded to do, let's call it 140 for both. So that'd be 156 total? Yes. Uh, can we call it 150? Uh, make a persuasion check. Uh, I'm not good at this. <laughs> Somebody's regretting not winning the uh, gambling table. Oh yeah, Brom's loaded right now. <laughs> Twenty-five. What? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> nice. I'm not gonna just put the dices. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she says. Uh, she she says. How about she says. 
it warms my heart to see someone so so interested in, in books. Uh, times have been a little a little lean lately. Why don't we call it 140 for the whole lot? You got it. Uh, Alright, so 140 gold gets you eight children's books. I will not be buying more things. <laughs> the <laughs> History of Laguna, three philosophy money. books, and a book entitled The Fall, and a book entitled The Age of Reason. You eat rice and beans for the rest of the... <laughs> <laughs> and trail rations. Yep. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Bron, you enter the curio shop called Well Curios. There are <coughs> a myriad of all sorts of like it's a pawn shop essentially cool. uh, there's all sorts of stuff there make an investigation roll as you look around is there anything you're in particular you're looking for just you're just browsing around uh, yeah nothing in particular as of right now <laughs> which means until i think of something <laughs> uh it's gonna be a 16 i think okay uh, well, what you find, and it does not take you long to find this, it is fairly prominently displayed, and as you kind of walk in, it's like, it's almost like you, like, as you notice this, everything around you goes, like, dim, and there's, like, a chorus of angels comes off. <clears throat> Behind the, uh, the main, uh, counter, there is a violin. It is the finest example of the instrument you have ever seen. Uh, for game for, for game mechanics purposes, this is a masterwork violin. There is a tag hanging from the uh, uh, the neck that, that has the number eight hundred written on it. Okay. Uh, and there is a uh, mostly bowling sort of hook nosed human man sitting behind the counter uh, reading like a uh, essentially just like a dime store paperback. Uh, doesn't really pay you much mind as you walk in. Besides, he kind of like looks up, eh, and goes back and just is looking at his book. Excuse me, my good man. He. What can I do for you? I am somewhat interested in this beauty right here. Ah, uh, yeah, pick that up. Uh, pick that up in an estate sale for cheap. This fine piece of uh, piece of equipment that. If you're musically inclined. You might say, as I touch all my rings. <laughs> well, you, you already know how to play the violin. I know, it's like your like, main instrument. It's super. <laughs> he says, well, mm -hmm. it's yours if you've got the coin. I've got uh, some coin. He says, well, uh, I can't sell you some of a violin, so... <laughs> Either you're going to have to find more coin or you're going to have to come up with something else. Because I certainly will. If you've got something you want me to look at, I'll trade you for store credit. Boy, do I have something special for you. <laughs> I'm going to pull out the bullshit dagger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like. This. A knife. He it's like points. There's like a hundred knives in a cabinet next to me. He's like, uh, he's like, I, I don't know how much uh, how much coin you're short, but I, that's not going to add much to the to the total. Well, you haven't seen it in action. He's like, <laughs> he like backs <laughs> up. <laughs> he definitely <laughs> thinks you're about to rob him. <laughs> Flashback. Ah! Jesus! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what the shit is that? It's a magic knife. He's only, like, only does damage to dead things. He kind of sits, he's like, oh my god. <sighs> he's like, mister. I almost peed my pants. <laughs> do not. He's like, okay, okay, all right. How much gold do you actually have? Uh, three hundred and forty gold. He's like, three hundred and forty. 
That's a decent thing, but I don't know how much I can sell it for. Ah, uh, it's still pretty good, though. Make a persuasion check. Three hundred gold for the violin. All right, I may be back. It'll, it'll be here. I've had it here for a while. Other question: <clears throat> You got the puppets? What? What? What kind of puppets? <laughs> Just <laughs> finger puppets? Like hand puppets? Uh, he's like, I don't know. Maybe in a crate in the back? Go go hunt around back there. Um, and as you kind of like go and you come back and there's a couple of like, uh, a couple of like Punching Judy puppets. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, uh, 15 gold for the pair of those. Not, not quite what I was looking for. You have any hum human skulls? Nope. <laughs> All right. Not much curios in this curio. <laughs> He's like, I got curios coming out my ass. I just, I, you're like looking for human skulls <laughs> coming in here with bullshit daggers and stuff. <laughs> That's funny. That's exactly what I call it. Aptly named, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll catch you around. Sure. Can I leave? All right. Flash back to Walter specifically asking if there are any laws we should. All righty. So you uh, you end up with a, um, a picture of this woman's best interpretation of you know of what Corey Point. might look like. Um, it's a very well drawn you know portrait uh, in charcoal, but. Obviously, it's done based off of, like, Me. his drawing of your drawing of your description of somebody who you haven't seen in, like, 20 years. Um, but you have that in your inventory. Uh, she charges you, like, three silver for it. Um, I give her a gold. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Um, she kind of, like, signs the bottom of her little portrait. Uh, so you guys have kind of done your business. Um, One more thing before I leave. I want to either convince them to form a contract for supply with Hans and Trade Company, or charge them for the recipe. Okay, make a persuasion roll. Do, do, do. Do you give out the D20? Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, 20. Okay. Uh, all right, they, uh, you basically leave there with assurances that they will, uh, they will just talk, essentially talk to their manager about, like, importing spices through Moxham. Um, okay. And meanwhile, uh, so we'll say at this point, like, everybody kind of finishes their individual things. You have this sort of lead on the general store as everybody gathers back together. Okay. Okay. I have a beanie, a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> my a plaid mustache, shirt. My mustache is now <laughs> waxed. And, uh, sunglasses? Nice and full. Uh, uh, I use mage hand to get my cup of tea because I don't want to touch. <laughs> He's wearing, like, Walter. skinny jean warlock robes. <laughs> Um, got my, got oh. my steaming cup of uh, Harvest Spice coffee. Try this cheese. He's sliced it up into a couple of individual mm. pieces. It's really good. I mean, it's not more than like a minuscule bite for each of you guys. Yeah. It was only a sample size to me. Yeah. Like, but it is goddamn delicious cheese. Mm. Uh, I well, Unfortunately, I don't have the address of Trolley Weather, but I do have a lead. I got books. Can you read them to us? I have tea. Uh, are you interested in history of the founding of the Order of Libra? She may not be, but I am. Do you have any kids' books? Nope, didn't get more kids' books. <laughs> <laughs> you are terrible. Okay. <laughs> Shouldn't there be like a directory? A yellow of, pamphlet? Of kids' books? No, of like addresses. Ron, by the way, Ronnie is with you. 
during this time. Mm-hmm. Ronnie comes back. She has like six loaves of bread in her arms that she went to like the, the oh, baker's there you stall. Are. Yeah, yeah. Open one. Uh, she like she eats this and you see like her pupils like dilate. She's like, I must acquire more of this. I'm gonna pick. I, I will pick some up on the way out as well, but it's over at Lorang's. Okay. It, it, ooh, ooh, okay. Don't spend you, all your gold. You're at a nine. I need you to come down to a three. If you go in there looking like that, they're gonna call the city guard. She just like she just like starts eating some of her bread to distract herself from her, her need for cheese. The need. The need She's got cheese. the need. <laughs> all right. So, um, general store. General store. Okay. Yep. Seems pretty good. What? Oh, yeah. Walter. What are all those people crowded I around there for? <laughs> helped myself. Help what? us. You guys should stop by Did the, you steal uh, something? No, 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 no. That's uh, usually what helped yourself <laughs> is. That's usually I what I call it anyway. very delicious coffee, uh, and the fine people at Constellation Rams were uh, nice enough to uh, make a deal with the Mercs. That's my company. <laughs> With the company. So, uh, I, we may be getting possibly a little kickback in the future. Um, is this a recipe you got from Stanfield? No. Uh, insight check. Okay. Well, <laughs> You see, I, I miss Stanfield's coffee Seven. so much. I just had this idea in my head, and I went with these guys, and they just, they hit it right out of the park, so. You hear, like, an argument is breaking out near that coffee shop that, as far as you can tell, seems to be about the design of their cups. <laughs> uh, you guys decide to head to the general store before things get ugly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I just finish my tea, toss it in the receptacle, and... Uh, right. So... Over the general store, um, it is like the other general stores that you have been in in your lifetime. It sells general goods. Uh, there is a human man uh, finishing up like a transaction with somebody as you guys uh, kind of enter. He looks up and he says, "Oh, hello. It's, uh, good morning. Good uh, morning, sir. Uh, welcome to the general store. Uh, anything I can help you with? I, I don't. I don't uh, recognize any of you, so I assume you're uh, visitors to Lagona. Welcome." Thank you. Thank you, most Thank guy. you. So if there's anything you, uh, if anything you need, let me know. As a matter of fact, uh, we are indeed travelers. Uh, we are here uh, as uh, to uh, see Bolus t- uh, Trolley Weather. Oh, Bolus, yeah. yeah. He's, he's he's fairly well known in town. He's a uh, quite the character, Mister Bolus. Haven't seen him in uh, haven't seen him in a while. Indeed. Yeah, a uh, couple of months at least. Um, I've, the household's been taking their uh, the regular deliveries. Um, it's not uncommon for, for Mr. Bolus to, to make last-minute trips. He's, he's a bit of an eccentric, you understand? Ah, okay. It's actually what we're here about. Uh, oh? We're working for someone he has a correspondence with. Uh, oh. And they hadn't heard from him in a couple of months, and we're getting worried. I see. Uh, well, um... I can I can certainly direct you to his estate if uh, if you're here to check up on him. Uh, absolutely. Um, this is kind of nice. This, this certainly. Um, this is, I mean, we've been we've been sending their deliveries. He's he's one of the one of several households that uh, you know brings brings their their everyday needs, fresh cut flowers for their you know their parlors, mm-hmm. uh, food for the kitchens, things like that. Uh, yes, yeah, so Mr. Mr. Lorang uh, pointed me kind in your direction. He says there are a few few businesses in town that uh, sort of. Uh, operate together, and uh, for a, for a small cut, I operate the cart uh, cart service that takes the supplies out there. As far as I know, they've been going out on schedule uh, with no interruption. Um, he says, but uh, certainly, I can certainly d- direct you. It's it's not difficult to find. Um, and he uh, kind of is like you know, sort of vaguely gesturing based on your you know mm-hmm. your your orientation and location here. Basically points you down the main road that leads east out of town, like along the lake shore. Mm-hmm. So like... This road? Right here? Yep. Yeah, so like 
We need, to, yeah, we need to get you one of those extended pointers. I, I actually have been thinking about getting a laser pointer so oh, that I, I can, can, like... I've got a few of those. <laughs> I will give one to you. Okay. He sort of points you out of town, <laughs> and he uh, he says, um, it's, it's just the one road that, that leads along the, uh, the, the shore of the lake, um, and uh, a number of the estates are just... Their drives are off of that. You want to head uh, about... Uh, mile and a half or so, uh, two miles. It's, it's, it's only about a, a 30 minute walk or so on foot, if you're on foot. Uh, he is, uh, thinks, the Trolley Weather Estate is the f- fourth drive uh, on the, uh, it'll be on your, uh, on your left. It's, uh, it's inland side rather than lakeside. All right. Um, he kind of, he looks back and he says, um, he calls uh, into the back room, and he, he, he says, uh, Lucas, Lucas, uh, c- can you come here a minute, son? Um, and a teenage human boy comes out, and he says, y- yes, um, yes, Mr. Stapler. Uh, and uh, Jim Stapler says, Lucas, has there been any issue with the uh, deliveries out to the trolley weather estate? He kind of scratches his chin. And he says, "No, I, I don't think so." Um, he says they they started taking their deliveries, um, le- leaving payment for collection, and just having us uh, unload by the uh, the servants' entrance. Um, he says, I, "I don't know that I've talked to any of the staff or anything like that for for a while." Uh, they didn't used to do that, which I guess is kind of weird. We, you know, we always used to be greeted by either the, the housekeeper or the butler or somebody. Um, they've just gone to leaving the payment, which... When was this, if I might ask? This, oh, I don't know, a while ago, a couple of months, maybe. So they're not the only house that does it that way, so we didn't, you know, it's not... We didn't think anything of it. Mm. Have you seen lights on, or does it look uh, like... Well, he says, well, you, we're usually there in the day, but, I mean, it looks... If it doesn't look abandoned, and, and they, you know, there's always payment ready, and somebody's taking the, the goods inside. So the grass is cut, and... This is, I mean, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's getting cold now, so a lot of stuff isn't really growing, and um, trolley weather was never... Uh, some, some of those fancy folks are really, like, really particular about their, like, the grounds. Trolley weather never... Um, so I, mean, I don't know. No more like no more than usual, no. out of order. Shaped bushes. No, he that. doesn't do the shaped bushes. Does any other houses do? Some of them, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we're not stealing a shaped bush. <laughs> do, you, do you need a house tour? <laughs> we'll get a look at a few of those on the way, no doubt. Uh, thank you, Lucas. Thank you very any much. Any particular sure. ones we, we should stop we, by? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find the Christmas lights in the fancy. <laughs> it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite the midwinter midwinter festival. So yet. who gives out the biggest candy bar for? Uh... <laughs> uh, so you guys, uh, you guys kind of have your uh, have your directions. Is there anything else you guys are looking to do in town before you head out there? It's about. It's not even lunchtime at this point. It was like nine in the morning when you got here. Nine thirty in the morning, and you've, you know, done maybe. 30, 40 minutes of, like, poking around this town square, so it's, like, 10.30 tops. Shall we eat before we, uh, go on? You just want more of that cheese. You want more of it, too. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie's like, cheese! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we could have our um, giant bronze friends. Uh, e- uh, easy enough. Um, we're not gonna, like, mm-hmm. waste time with that, because I want to, like, get progress the story. So, like, can, you guys grab lunch. Yeah. Yep. Can I also get one of those Oh, you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Mage hand, like, the to-go cup area. Like, okay. <laughs> yes. uh, you I, use I throw to... a silver at them and someone's going, oh, yeah. what? There right, you go. So you guys, you guys eat lunch, you're about ready to go, uh, but then Brom, who has been, like, clearly plotting something for the last <laughs> few minutes here, uh, I suppose, speaks up. What? what is what is it going to be our second episode with a heist? Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> what? I have seen the most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, just for one night? Look, I 
I'm not sure how you managed to find the brothel so quickly, but... <laughs> This is no <laughs> Oh. We are going to visit a rich guy's house. Um, That's true. Yeah, what? Everybody, come with me. Alright, you kind of, like, you all, you all just, like, burst through the door of Caldwell <laughs> Curios, and, uh, Brom points out to you a violin on the wall behind Caldwell. Hmm. It's a stringy... Neat. Thanks. It's. It definitely it. looks. I don't know how trained any of your eyes might be for musical instruments. It definitely looks like it's a nice instrument, a very well crafted piece of musical instrument. Oh no! Uh, I'm you, deliberately <laughs> understanding. It's like neat. <laughs> you probably. You guys probably don't have quite the like true understanding of the like the quality of this instrument. This is the first one I've seen with all of its strings. <laughs> Sad <laughs> for you. <laughs> Uh, what color is it? Is it just normal violin It can look like whatever you want it to look like if this is going to be an item that you acquire. Artwood. Purple artwood. Terrible. Ebony black. I think it's hot rod Zebra red. Zebra stripes. <laughs> it's hot, it's hot, it is hot rod red. Lacquered, lacquered cherry wood in a hot rod, hot rod red varnish. It's an electric violin. It's an electric violin. <laughs> okay. How, how much is it? Uh... 800 gold. Sign says 800. Uh, well, we could. We're working. I have about 350, and I can get 200 from my bullshit dagger. You've got you about. You've got about 540. Yeah. Between I don't. I haven't decided dagger. if I'm gonna get that out. Right now, it seems pretty friggin' useless. It sounds like you're short, like five, three to 500 gold. All right. Well, let's. Let's sleep on it. Yeah. Let's table that. We know it's here. It's unlikely to go anywhere. What time you close tonight? He's like... <laughs> uh, we don't, as it turns out. We're open all night, and, uh... Yep, the night shift... Uh, the night shift is worked by my brother, who is a city guard. <laughs> Perception uh, check. <laughs> is it like an hour's we time? Insight, insight check. Insight, yeah, insight check. Uh... <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, he's saying all this as there's a sign next to him that says like <laughs> "sunrise to sundown." <laughs> okay, got it. He's like, "Don't rob me!" <laughs> what is his voice like? Oh, don't, don't rob me! Uh, look, if I get robbed, I've seen all of your faces. I am still absolutely dressed like a hipster right now, so. <laughs> He kind of has to break my spell safe and see through my disguise. Come, come on, man. We'll, we'll come back to this. Right. <laughs> oh my god. There's always plan A. If that doesn't work, plan B. <laughs> plan A. <laughs> Please tell me you're not <laughs> doing that in front That's outside. That's outside. That's outside. <laughs> We've been over this. Plan A and Plan B. Put <laughs> just two crowbars. Oh my oh god. Let's goodness. put those away. So let's go to the rich guy's house. Yes. See, see if we can... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I whack him upside the head. His calf goes flying. Nope. <laughs> Alrighty, we get well. Get permission first. <laughs> Let's uh, let's take our break, um, and we will return as you guys. Uh, we'll, we'll say our, our break will be the fast travel as you guys are walking to the Trolley Weather Estate. We'll come back in a couple of minutes, and uh, you'll be there already. And then we won't have to spend five minutes bullshit narrating you guys walking down a road. Uh, and uh, we'll see where the rest of the night takes us. All right, uh, stick around. We'll be back in a couple Damn. of minutes. Uh, <laughs> Brahm is clearly going to rob a poor shopkeeper for a violin. <laughs> 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 and uh, we'll be back in a second. Bye. Hey there, everyone. Matt Palmieri here, your host and dungeon master. Thank you for joining us for tonight's episode of Tabletop Legends. I hope that you're enjoying the show so far. I know I am. Uh, while myself and the rest of the gang are refilling our drinks, stretching our legs, and relieving ourselves of the pee that we've been holding in for the last two hours, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about our sponsors here at Proficiency Bonus. First up is Little Dragon Corp. Little Dragon Corp are purveyors of fine gaming dice, as well as all sorts of other tabletop gaming goodies. 
They've got a huge selection of polyhedral dice you can choose from, uh, and prices that you couldn't shake a stick at even if you had a plus one stick of shaking at your disposal. Uh, they recently released their line of birthstone dice. They have new metal dice sets available, and they are constantly coming out with new products. Uh, if, unlike Becca, who we have to physically restrain from buying dice on stream once a week during our ad read, D&D uh, &D dice are not your thing, they have definitely got some other cool stuff you can get your hands on. Uh, they've got spell cards. They've got gaming accessories. Uh, they have a whole bunch of other tabletop style games that you can order right to your door. And if you want to check them out, you can type exclamation point little dragon into the Twitch chat at any time for a quick link to their store. Or just go to your favorite web browsing apparatus and you can go to www.littledragoncorp.com. And remember, if you do purchase anything, tell them we sent you. You can use the code bonus at checkout for 10% off your order like to buy, uh, I don't know, like 11 sets of dice, it would be like one of them would be free. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's probably not how math works, but, uh, you know, don't, I just don't think about it too hard. And, uh, you know, go, go check them out, littledragoncorp.com for all of your sweet, sweet dicey needs. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Marble Moon Studio and the Ape House. They are an independently owned, ethically sourced, witchy lifestyle and home goods shop. Their goal is to support small businesses and create a safe, inclusive space slash community for witchy folks. Uh, they've got a, a just a ton of super cool merchandise that you can order online, uh, including uh, the widely popular Tabletop Legends Magic AF D20 mug. Um, but hey, you know, it's not it's just not all mugs over there. It's not just like they're not an entire store filled with mugs. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with stores filled with mugs. If you're, a, if you're a mug store, I mean, that's a great business plan, and good for you. And, you know, call me. We'll set up a sponsorship. Uh, but uh, Marble Moon Studio in the 8th House, well, they've got, uh, they've got way more than that. Uh, they've got all sorts of things. They've got wall art. They've got candles. They've got apparel. I mean, you don't, you don't need to listen to me just, like, list off a bunch of random products off of their site. Um, you can take a look at the, uh, the sweet montage that I'm probably going to edit into the background of this audio. Uh, or, I mean, better yet, just go to their website. Uh, you can look for yourself and not have me read it to you like an idiot. Uh, you can find them online at either marblemoonstudio.com or shoptheeighthhouse.com. Uh, I've met both of the ladies who run this business in person. They're awesome. They're awesome, awesome people. Uh, you need to go buy things from them right now. Uh, thank you, Marble Moon Studio and the Eighth House, for supporting us and our silly Dungeons and Dragons mess around. Uh, we love you, and uh, you know, hit me up about a cut of that sweet mug money. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to sponsor an episode of Tabletop Legends, uh, maybe you want to give a shout out to your website, your business, or a podcast of your very own, you can do that. Send an email to tabletoplegendsdnd at gmail.com. That's tabletoplegendsd, the letter N, D, at gmail.com. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't just have to be uh, a business. Maybe you want to promote, uh, I don't know, maybe you just, like, you're really good at kickflips and you want people to know that. You can, you know, you can do that. Maybe you, maybe you have a friend and you know your friend watches the show and you want to hear me call him a dew-headed fart baby over the internet. We can do that. Send me an email. We'll work something out. Uh, maybe you've been working up the courage to ask out the girl you like and you just can't bring yourself to do it. Uh, why not pay a podcast host to do it for you? I don't see how it couldn't work. Uh, send us a message at, at tabletoplegendsdnd at gmail.com and all of your dreams uh, can come true, no matter how ridiculous they are. Uh, well, anyway, that's, that's all I've got from you. I have talked long enough. Uh, please enjoy the, uh, uh, the ear candy, um, sweet sounds of our royalty-free background music for another few minutes or so until we return for the rest of our episode. Thank you. Uh, I love you. I didn't mean to say it, but there it is. Uh, now it's out there. We're just, we have to deal with this now. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll deal with it after the rest of the show. All right, hey, thank you. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for waiting through our uh, sweet ad rolls there. Um, uh, I hope you liked them. I uh, worked super hard with my novice video editing skills to put that together. 
Uh, we, uh, we rejoin the party now, as you guys are um, making your way out to the Trolley Weather Estate after acquiring some directions from the, uh, the general store owner. Uh, so the Trolley Weather Estate is no more than uh, like an hour's easy walk towards the outskirts of Laguna proper. Um, the roads uh, are a kind of like a winding trail through the lakeside landscape. They are well cared for, they are like wide and easily traversable. Um, and following the uh, instructions given to you by uh, Jim Stepler, uh, you, you have no trouble finding the place. Um, there are another, a number of other turnoffs, as he said there would be, that you can kind of like look, if you look through the trees and the landscape, you see lead to like numerous other large manor houses that dot the shore of Lake Turnier. Um, but after about an hour, you make your way to the turnoff that he told you would lead to the Trolley Weather Estate. You head off of the open road, and you see that the estate is uh, set a ways back from the lake uh, on a relatively, like, open and flat bit of land um, that almost looks like it has been like cleared expressly for this estate house. Um, you approach the estate house, which is a large, luxurious looking manor home. Um, it's, it's like much larger than, so like you were in Conrad Delker's manor house in the city. It's way bigger than that. Um, this is like a massive mansion, essentially. Um, there is a sort of a large, it, it's not shown on that map there, because it's not like the important part, but there is like this large sort of circular uh, piece of lawn um, out like in front of the house. Uh, you, like, so you're looking at very, the, basically the very top of it, which has yeah. been uh, essentially like the terrain has been leveled around it, so that this like circular disc of lawn is about three feet elevated or like above the surrounding ground. Uh, and then, like, right as it gets to the house, there's, like, a pair of little, there's, like, a little bridge at the front end and the back of it, um, and, like, a couple of little, like, peel-offs, so essentially this, this circle is at the same level as the house, but, like, the rest of the grounds in front of it have been, like, cleared, kind of, like, lowered away, yeah. making this sort of interesting-looking landscape, uh, arrangement. Um, there are... There is it. So there's a large circular uh, lawn um, off to uh, the one side of the house. There, the I guess that's your was that your right the right side of the house from your guys' perspective. If we're if you're coming going, that way. If we're going up this way. Then it's that's the right the side way. of the house. Uh, you see a um, like a semicircular carriage shed uh, coming out from around from like behind the house, and that's the way that the like the carriage path goes it goes up and then loops around behind the house that way yep <laughs> um the building is uh four stories tall um it has uh, for at least what you can see from the front here there are at least like two wings that appear as if they were annexed onto the main portion of the building after the original uh construction um the front door is sheltered beneath a short peaked roof and flanked by garden beds that encompass the entire front of the manor uh, as I said, you can make out the corner of what looks like that carriage garage off to the, the side of the building, curving like back around out of sight of the main house. Um, so basically, you guys are like kind of at that front circular lawn area, and you are free to do as you please. Can I just like knock on the door? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, right, we're yeah. simply so here. It's a straightforward way. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you kind of walk up to the door, um, uh, since you had, like, specifically asked about it before, um, or somebody had anyway, and it was, like, so it's kind of on your radar, as you look at, like, the condition of the grounds, um, it is, like, getting to be winter, so, like, all of the stuff in the flower beds is, like, pretty much dead at this point, um, you do notice that, like, none of the, none of the stuff has been, like, deadheaded or, like, cut back for the winter, um, there, there's not really much in the way of, like, trees around the immediate area of the estate, um, but there is some, like, kind of leaf buildup around. Uh, nothing that immediately says, like, abandoned. Um, no, so no much as, like, blue shutters, no... Right, the, I mean, the house looks in good condition. Nothing immediately strikes you as, like, this place is abandoned. They just left um, the mums. It kind of looks like, right, it looks like... It, 
it was on your radar, so, like, I mentioned it. Um, but it could just be, like, well, if he, you know, if, if the master of the house, Mr. Bolas Trolleyweather, doesn't care to, like, have the staff maintain the grounds as meticulously, like, it could be that. Yeah. Um, but it is, like, something you kind of catch your eye. You approach the front door. Um, the, uh, the house is, uh, you, I mean, it's dark within in the sense that, like, it's the middle of the day, so, like, there's not lamps and stuff on. Uh, but you see, like, there's a number of large windows all over, like, the front of the house. They, there, you, see, you can sort of see in. You'd have to go and really look in to see in. But, like, curtains and stuff are open. Um, you go up knock on the front door um, and after you wait a couple of minutes you see there is uh, there is no answer is anyone else on the door? is anyone been moving around? alright <clears throat> uh, that's a 19 you put in your ear kind of to the mm -hmm. door yeah you listen it is quiet within Go to the servants' quarters entrance and see if there's anything <laughs> around the back. I mean, it's possible if he has a small staff, uh, someone might not have heard the door. Uh, but chances are, if the servants' entrance is close to the kitchen, there's usually somebody there. Also, it'd be a lot better to break in if we're not like at the front door. <laughs> I am aware of that. <clears throat> Thanks. So you guys want to like head around the back? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So you kind of which way you going? Which way? Probably. That way. Just yeah. follow, follow in the carriage sure. path around. All right. So you kind of heading that way. You see there are a number of uh, you know there are windows dotting the exterior. You know the the first floor of this this house. Um, as you come around to that like large portion there, that wing, you do see there are curtains. All of the curtains on that portion are drawn shut. Um, you follow the carriage path around. Uh, as you arrive, kind of start coming around back of the building, what you see is uh, there is, in fact, a, like a carriage garage there. There are currently two vehicles parked in it. There is a, like, a nicer, higher quality looking, like, coach. Uh, the type of thing that, like, if, you know, Bolas were to be taking a trip into town, he would ride in with his driver taking him in. Uh, and then there is, like, a more plain looking, like, cart uh, that would be used for... Uh, you know, like the staff, if they're going to make trips in and out of town for like supplies or things like that, would, would use. Both of those are parked neatly in, in the carriage shed. Um, attached stables or the stables? Uh, stable is attached, so that's what that sort of cockeyed building there is, is a stable. All of the doors to that are shut that you see. Uh, I'm going to stop for a moment and just listen. Okay, uh, we'll resolve that in a second. As you so you like peel off to go listen at the stable doors as the rest of you are going this way. I just want to like describe the scene in the rest mm -hmm. of the area here. <laughs> the back of the house, um, there is a semicircular like stone patio, essentially coming off the back portion of the main house. There, there are two long rows there, um, containing uh, trellised uh, what look like fruit trees, essentially. So they're you know they're about yay high. Uh, like very well branched and supported by like cables that have been sh strung along these beds. It's winter time; they are without leaves or fruit on them. Um, you do see like the leaf litter from the trees is just on the ground beneath them. Um, there is a well with like a spigot coming off of the side of it to you know pump water for the house. That building is a detached, a smaller detached building, which you probably. Just at a guess, you would think is like, oh, maybe that's the servant's house or the guest house, something like that. Um, and then it's just more, you know, windows and flower beds along the base of the house along here. So that's kind of what you guys see. Alar is like peeling off towards the um, carriage shed to listen there. I will uh, follow. You're, so you're going with it. Uh, anybody else doing anything else before I resolve their carriage shed deal? Standing back and waiting. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna be like right around here ish. Sure. Just chilling. <laughs> Alar, uh, roll a perception check as you listen at the kind of door of the car uh, stables here. Mm, this five. 17. Okay, so you kind of come to, uh, so the like, this sort of barn style doors are mm -hmm. shut, closed. Um, you go up to one of the like pass doors, the personnel doors essentially, um, which does have like a, uh, the proper term for those is, but it's like, you know, one of those, like, half-circular windows, mm -hmm. little windows at the top. 
So you kind of listen at the door, and like peek your head in, and as, as you're listening, you definitely hear something move within. And as you're kind of like looking, uh, it's pitch black in there. You can't really tell what it is, but you like you see something move, uh, kind of low-ish to the ground. Um, you know, maybe yay high. Uh, it's just a sort of a shape moves in between a couple of the like dark, unilluminated stalls that you can see within there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pop back down, uh, head back toward the group. I didn't hear or see horses, but there's something in there. Alright, do you want to find out what, or...? I don't like leaving things at my bag, and I could uh, try and put a knife in it. I could um, go around the back, just in case it tries to make a nice exit out the back. I'm going to cast light on a rock. Okay. Just hand it to him. Thanks. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> uh, so you have light on a rock, you're going around the back. What's mm-hmm. everybody else doing? I will back him up. You're with him? Uh, what do you guys I'll do? back him up. Alright, and where are you going, bro? Okay. Alright, so the three of you begin to pass around the back. You guys, as they're making their way, what are you guys doing at the front here? Are you trying to pick your pick your way into the into the room here? What's your what's your sort of plan? Well, <clears throat> as they kind of are going around the side of the building, the back of the building. And we can just toss that in and still have the door in between us and whatever that is. Yeah. Certainly would surprise them. And uh, if it's a sta- well, if it's a stable hand, well, we explain ourselves. Yep. All right. Uh, or we can kick the door down. I mean, I guess we can't kick the door down. <laughs> all, all our door kicking people are over there. <laughs> I, I do have two questions. I, I, I imagine Ronnie's body back in that. I'll see, yeah, we'll put Ronnie with you guys. That yeah. makes sense. Let's see if uh, this doesn't get violent first. So I'm going to head back over and... So you, the, the, this this building is sealed. Mm-hmm. So there's a window. I mean, you can throw yeah. the rock through the window. Oh, it's a glass it's window. It's a glass window. Oh! I don't it's a glass it. window. Are there, are there windows on the other side where we're at? So as you guys are coming, coming around back, we'll... We'll get. To, I just want to like okay. see um, what your, I will your thought is here. Check, oh yeah, I will it is check locked the, as okay. you check it. All right. Uh, I'm gonna pick the lock. All right, pull so this. You guys start to pick. So then I'm gonna hold that, and when you unlock it, I'm just gonna. Okay. So go ahead and make your your uh, dexterity, your your sleight of hand. Whew. Not good. Uh, all right. All right, so while he's figuring that, you guys make your way around the back of the. Um, what you got? Eleven. Uh, okay, well, it's, uh, luckily for you, all you needed was a tent. It's not a particularly complicated okay. lock. It's just a stable door. Okay. Um, so you managed to open that and open the door just a little okay. bit. Kel, Go ahead. Toss the rock in. Uh, you guys, as you are around the back of the building, as you come around back, what you see is in the back of the building, in the far corner, so like the corner that would be kind of over here, mm-hmm. there is, at the butt, like the, where the ground meets the wall, there is a portion of the uh, the wall which is uh, which is wooden. It's a wooden building. Uh, seems to have like rotted a little bit, and has been either like rotted away or something like dug dug it out. Uh, so there is about a yay big like jagged opening in the back of this building back of this, this building. And as you guys are kind of um, like looking at that and getting over to that, uh, you can sort of hear from inside and a little bit see the like tap, tap, tap of this light rock as Kel just like hucks it in there. Um, make a... Everybody can make a perception check as you guys are like outside this building here. Ooh. 25. 18. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's less than 10. <laughs> uh, 6. Yeah. Okay. 16. Okay. What's your wisdom modifier at this point? That's what I'm checking. <laughs> no. And Ronnie gets 13. It's plus whatever. Yeah. Uh, so anybody higher than 10 will hear this. Nope. Anybody below does not really hear anything. Um, as the kind of rock 
is like hot in there. You definitely hear something in one of the stalls like move. Um, and um, who, uh, yours was like an 18, right? You 25. had a, uh, 25. Okay. Was yours is 18. Uh, so, Alar, as you're like at the door, you, you see this rock like it doesn't illuminate anything. You can't see anything mm -hmm. through what it sheds. But you hear something move within one of these stalls. And uh, you hear a very low, like, like a snuffling and then like a kind of a grumble like sort of a growl almost okay. pull out the hand crossbow make sure it's loaded I think it's an animal well better than the alternative uh, I would have preferred it being a stable hand going what in god's name is going on <laughs> well when's every, anything ever gone easy not since I joined the group. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how big is the uh, building itself, roughly? Uh, it's probably a probably hundred or so feet long and maybe 50 feet deep. I proceed in heading toward the uh, source of the noise. Alrighty. Um, so what are you guys doing out back as you uh, don't really know what they're doing, but you, so you know they've like thrown a rock at this point? Checking out the hole. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Dancing Lights and jam three orbs into the hole. Okay. Uh, so, Alar, you are like sneaking forward, and all of a sudden, from um, like off to your right, <laughs> three like light orbs like come into here. Um, and as soon as that happens, uh, whatever this thing is in this stall, you like. Is become spooked. You you basically hear like, <laughs> and uh, bolting out, uh, heading right for you, uh, out of one of these stalls is a wolf. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> so everybody, go ahead and roll me some initiative. From the back of the building. Not better. Seven. Oh, we're back in the skin. <laughs> 14 13 12 11 Really? Yes <laughs> uh, Ronnie Seven. Got a 6 we almost, we almost had the perfect we have, we have 14, 13, 12, 11, 6 And 7 Alrighty, uh, first react, Kel, uh, you can see the flash of these lights just, like, come seemingly, like, out of the wall, at the back wall from your perspective. Um, as Alar's moving in, you're, like, kind of looking at his back, and you see this wolf, like, come barreling out of one of the stalls, heading right at him. Uh, I am going to step into the building and hold an action. Okay. If it attacks him, I will frostbite it. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Alar yourself. There is a wolf running in your direction. Uh, I will attempt to intimidate the wolf. Okay. Who <laughs> <laughs> do you think you are, me? <laughs> <laughs> I failed to intimidate the wolf. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? You? What are you yelling at the uh, wolf? Wait. I, I I yell back at get back. Okay, but it sounds a little more panicky than I would prefer. Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that hasn't. Uh, we haven't reached that point yet. He, he tried to say get back, but what he really said was ah! <laughs> <laughs> No, that would be if I rolled a three. I rolled a nine, so it's more about get back, get get, get back. Alrighty, uh, Good puppy, good puppy, good Brom, puppy. you hear, uh, you hear like a, <sighs> and Alar yell from within this building, but you don't see anything yet. Okay. I'm gonna go, make, start making my way around the front door. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll say if you use your dash, you can pretty much get, like, around to the front of the building again. Okay. Uh, okie dokie. Uh, but, but, but Walter, you are up. So you are standing at like the hole. at the hole, 
Uh, have I'm throwing your lights through it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to move through the hole. Okay. Uh, you, you no check required. You, okay. you basically climb through the hole. Um, so you find yourself standing at like the back of one of the stalls. Um, Walter is in front of you, and maybe like three Alar. or four. Alar is is like in front of you, and a couple of feet uh, like further down the building than you, looking like off past you, like off away from you. I'm going to send my orbs and then keep them about twenty feet apart, and just like send them down. The lane. Okay. So just just so they're like at the edge. All right. Kind of light illuminate the area. Okay. Uh, Nula, what are you up to? Can I cut through this hole? Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah, probably. I. Uh, I <laughs> we were too big for the hole. Okay, <laughs> Rob, Rob's like, nah. <laughs> He's like, look, yeah. you have gotten all of your clean stuff messed yeah. up. I mean, you basically kind of have to like smash your way through, um, as you're like a person-sized person, and this is like an animal, person. an animal-sized hole. Uh, but yeah, easy enough to get in. You are right. You now find yourself right behind Walter, uh, who is in the process of like sending these orbs of light, like zoom. There's like a light show going on in this in this stable it's right now. Wolf rave. Wolf rave. <laughs> uh, can we see the you can. You guys cannot see the wolf from where you're from where you're standing. Can we? Like, do we notice like a smell or? Uh, sure. Horses? Make a perception check. Actually, I'll, I'll call that a nature check. I yes, the smell of deceased horses. <laughs> so should I also be making Three! Uh, it just smells kind of musty in here. You smell yourself. <laughs> so the, the cold, the kind of the cold air has kind of got any, like, scent from really being uh, settled down. I will say, even with the three, um, it, like, doesn't you would, it here? doesn't smell like Death. horses. Like, okay. you would expect, like, horse smell to be yep. in this yep. building if there were horses in here. You don't smell that. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Ronnie is going to... What do you guys want Ronnie to do? <laughs> she's basically she's behind the Kel at the door. Uh, she's a barb, right? Uh, she's a barbarian. Uh, yes. I mean... Grapple the wolf. I was going to say wrestle the wolf at yep. this she, point. But like... uh, she probably can't get to it, but you, she can charge in there and, like, I hold an action. Based on what she's described in the character, that's exactly yep. what I imagine yep. okay. it would do. So, yeah, she, we'll have her run in there. She can get... Ronnie comes, like, barreling up about even with you um, and basically just, like, <laughs> gets ready. Um, and it is finally the wolf's turn. Uh, and so what you guys see, Ronnie and a and Alar and probably Kel from, like, the doorway since you were holding an action to kind of watch. Uh, this wolf is, like, charging down it right at, like, where you guys have, like, filed in. Uh, but, like, there's, like, a light rock, and, like, there's a bunch of noise, and Walter's lights are, like, going around. The thing is running, but it's, like, it's more of, like, like, have you ever seen a dog freak out and try to, like, get away from something? It's, like, going all, like, going all zigzag, like, curving. Um, still coming right for you guys, uh, cause, uh, it, I would say, like, probably now you are aware, as, like, two of your party came, like, you guys are between it and its way out of this, like, this room. Oh, crap. Um, probably just let it leave. Yep. So it is gonna, like, sprint at you guys. Um, I'm gonna say, since Ronnie is trying to, like, grab it, it's gonna make an attack against her. Um, and it does not succeed. It rolls a one. Uh, and we'll have her, I guess she's gonna try and grab it, since that was her held action. Uh, I don't know what her modifier is, so I'm just gonna give her a straight roll, and she doesn't manage to grab it either. So basically this wolf just comes, like, barreling down, there's, like, a brief, like, horrifying tussle where, like, Ronnie is trying to grab it, and it's, like, flailing everywhere, and, like, kicking and, and snapping and biting, uh, but basically the two, like, wriggle past each other. And it, like, in a panic, just, like, scrabbles out of this hole, uh, and, like, just runs off. Bye! That actually went a lot better than I thought it would. Right. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna use dancing lights to, like, kind of illuminate the I, I, Where you had, like, spaced them out, you're pretty well illuminating okay. the, the area here. Uh, Is there something I can knock in front of the hole? Um... 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can find something to so, like, like the side of the stall, just like kind of break it off. And jam I'm sure you can off. jam something. It's, a, yeah. it's a stable. There's stuff around. We'll gonna, say you can yeah. kind of cover that back. I'm up. gonna take a quick look around. Sure. Uh, make an investigation. Anybody who's like looking yeah. around in this in this place, make an investigation check. Not great, but that's okay. Ten. Okay. Fifteen. Eleven. Also fifteen. Eight. Okay. So the doors, um, you've picked your way into one. All of the other stable doors are locked and, like, barred from the inside. Um, that, uh, wolf was in here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, luckily for you guys, you, like, <laughs> you came in in such a way that was, like, very scary for an animal. Ooh. So instead of having to fight it, it just, like, took off. Um, so it's, like, it's gone. Uh, but what you do find in here are... Uh, bu 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 three dead horses um, in three separate stalls. Um, yeah, I guess it would be a medicine check. You're making a medicine check to check them over if you'd like. Nineteen. Okay. Um, so, uh, they've been dead for a while. Um, does a bit to explain the lack of like a death smell in here. They're like they're not in the, the process of like decomposing. They're pretty well like desiccated at this point. Um, they're not mummified. They're just not mummified, but they've been dead for several months, probably. Okay. You do see signs as you look like over them. Some of them, uh, like they were clearly picked upon by like scavengers, like rats, probably yeah. the wolf. Um, but you don't think, with that 19, you're pretty sure that's not how they died. They look like they died of neglect. Uh, the stalls are, like, totally, like, mess, like, horse, horse manure everywhere, not cleaned up. They are, even even in their, like, desiccated state, you can tell they were, like, rail thin when, before they died. Um, so you get, the, you get the impression that essentially these horses were just, like, locked in this stable and then just... Left. Nobody came and took care of them and, and until they died. These horses were left to die. Nobody's been here for a while. Whoever is uh, accepting the, uh, the food and leaving out the payment, it ain't trolley weather, it ain't his people. At the very least, they could have opened the stall doors and just left them. No, that would have been suspicious. Somebody's trying to keep up appearances. When I get the back door? I think we should check the servants' quarters first, and then you, That's right. as as much ground cover. Yeah, I don't know why that, that building all, behind us. Some lights down the well, and see if we can see anything down there. Um, yeah. If, if there's no one here, then we need to find out when the next delivery is supposed to be. All right. Check the well. The one quarters. thing to note. They closed all the curtains on that one side. I do want to get a look on the uh, other ha uh, wing, see if they did the same thing. They left uh, they left all the windows open at the front. And I also want to know where the servant's entrance is, because if they left the windows open on that side, chances are whoever is here accepting those... They might be in there. So, for to save to save you guys on time of like individually having to do this, let's say at this point you guys are pretty thoroughly investigating the stuff here and like the surrounding areas. I've heard you mention stuff. Why don't you guys all just roll investigation checks for me, and I will like narrate you through what you find as you look around the the, the, the grounds of the house. So. Another ten. Okay. Ten. Sixteen ten. for the well. Okay. Uh, for the servants' quarters, that is a twenty-seven. So. Okay. So here is here is what what we find. Let's start with the house itself. All right. That's just easy. I can put this down. Here is what you find, basically looking in the windows. <laughs> Most of the house on the first floor, as you're able to look in, is the windows are the, the curtains are open. Um, you can see right inside. It's bright sunlight streaming in. Um, the house looks kept up. There's not, like, it's not, like, dirty, dusty, disgusting, you know, in there. It, it looks like a perfectly nicely maintained manor home. 
All of the, the curtains, as I said, are drawn in, in that wing, in that chamber, at least on this floor. Um, on the other side, the other wing, uh, there is that, like, that center portion there. There's no windows. There's no windows there. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, like, wall. Um, so there's nothing to see in. Um, but you can see the, the, the rooms flanking that, uh, so that that room in the back there by the, the well is the kitchens. You see kitchens yeah. there. Um, you see, so, uh, in, in the front there is what basically just looks like a sitting room, like a parlor. There's, you know, nice chairs, uh, stuff like that. Uh, there is a dining room, essentially, like, near the kitchen there. Uh, across a, uh, you, there is one, there's, like, a window in the center there, so you can see that there's, like, a hallway that leads up. Um, and flanking that hallway is the dining room and, uh, like, a, uh, an open ballroom, essentially. Uh, in the front of the house, there is that sitting room. Flanking the, the, the door there uh, is a, is a foyer. And then there is what appears to be like a music room. So there's a, a room that has like chairs and seating areas and like a bunch of different instruments all kind of around the area. Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, the servants building, so this does turn out to be like a servants quarters building. Um, as you guys look through the window to that and then maybe even like Pick your way in oh, and yeah. go in. I picked the lock. So and this this room, unlike the house, which looks like it is being kept up, this building this this building looks abandoned, um, and abandoned in such a way that it almost looks like the people that w were here just like left it mid whatever was going on. Um, so it's definitely been unoccupied for like a, a pretty significant amount of time. You know. Uh, again, like maybe months. Um, it's not like falling apart, but they're they're it, like I said, it looks like the staff on like maybe left unexpectedly. There's like a serving board out in like the servants' kitchen with like the blackened remains of what might have been like a cheese cheese and fruit board. Uh, there are like some linens that are partially like that haven't haven't been folded yet, um, and everything is just covered in like a fine layer of dust. Um, so whereas, like, everything in the house, from what you can see looking in, looks like it's being kept up, this has not been touched. Uh, Walter, when you cast your dancing lights and you go and you look in the bottom of that well, what you find is that the bottom of that well, you find the, you find what has been happening to all of the supplies that have been brought here. Mm. Somebody has just been throwing them into the bottom of this well. There's a bunch of, like, crates and sacks and you see like some parcels of like what were like dried out flowers um so any of the stuff that's been like being brought here and then like left somebody is then going and just throwing it into the well hmm. um i think that is oh um everybody make me one more investigation check or let's call this a perception check rather i am legally blocked 18 okay. and Rami rolls a natural 20. Okay. 12. Uh, 20. Wait, did you roll 22? I rolled a 19 plus 2. Well, uh, since Ronnie's not here, we'll just we'll, we'll use yours as the highest roll there. Four. Yeah, as you guys are looking four. around at one point newly, you like kind of look back at the house on a uh, an upper floor window. You see a curtain shift. You don't see anybody, but you like... It, it's it's shifting as if like somebody had been looking out the window and like let it go and moved away right before you looked. Mm -hmm. You kind of see it settle back into place and stops moving. I will grab my hammer. And be like, there's someone inside looking at us. They've seen us. All right, plan A time. I'm gonna go to the door. What door? The whatever. Yeah, back whatever we're close to. Maybe. Do I know which, like, above what section of the house? Uh, it was, like, in sort of the center of the main portion of the house there. So, like, kind of above where that hallway is on, like, the third floor. Gotcha. Um, all right, so you go to the door, and you're what? You're just going to break it down? Oh, crowbar, you know. All right, roll an attack roll. Natural 20. Okay. Thank God. So you like <laughs> rolled less you, than ten on everything else. You have never hit anything so well with like a crowbar, crowbar in yeah, your right. in your life. Oh, you're prying. Yeah, prying out like. <laughs> you're like. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you. I was in my head. It was like 
It was like you like smash out the window and then reach in. It was like one of those guys. No, oh, well, I could do that too. Either <laughs> way, either way, what happens <laughs> is your crowbar like refracts off of the door as if it was made out of like titanium. That doesn't even slash pr- yeah, or if you fine. pry like the crowbar bends. I was gonna say that with the natural twenty, I was gonna say the crowbar bends a little bit because, like, you're like that's how strong you are. You have you have determined that like there is something extraordinary about this door as you go to try and like crowbar your way into it. Blue and nat twenty on an open door. (laughs) Walter, that's not natural. See if that's magical. Uh, Magic eyes. (laughs) Uh, So you detect magic and. The, the lights went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light, you're... You're actually not picking up anything that is registering as, like, enchanted to you on the outside of this this portion of the building here. Uh, I'm gonna be very confused and then, like, take a, take a couple steps back and see if there's anything that's kind of... Like, well, if you're moving around in this area, when you well, get over towards that, yeah. like, the mystery room, you can see, like, a number of individual, like... Nothing super, like, potent, but, like, within the 30-foot range, as you are, like, close to the outside of this, there are, like, a number of individually magical things in that space. So this is the treasure room. (laughs) Um, There's stuff in there. Uh... Can I? Let me get that... Oh, wait, uh, do you still have that... Brass. Oh. Nail. Here's your nail. Uh, is, is there any landings anywhere on these upper floors? It's just like, just solid, solid, solid nail. Uh, is there a uh, keyhole or something like that? For so the as center? as you look over that door, you do see that there there does not appear to be a keyhole, something to like for you to pick on the doors in this like this back area. So as you like you look at you look at the one to there, you look at the one to like the kitchens and stuff, these doors do not appear to have uh, like pickable things from the outside. Uh, was there one at the front door? There was. Alright. So I can't pick this lock. The windows on the second floor. Do you want to try to go through those? You wanna see if they can break first? Uh, at this point they know we're here. Yeah. Does anybody have a rock? I'm sure there we can find rocks There's There's rocks about. Rocks Wait, about. So I'm, can... I'm just going to throw a rock. I'm trying to throw a rock through one right. of the windows. On Make the a dexterity base attack roll to see if you can hit a, hit a window with it. 19. Uh, yeah, so you huck a rock pretty hard, and it like it just like... and falls down. All right, well, the uh, operation teleport up to the second floor, jam the nail into the wall, and use it as a handhold for a rope to climb up to the second floor window... Is a fail. I'm that is entertaining. I'm heading around. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna follow you. Um, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right. All righty. So you make your way. Cover me. Back around to the front of the building. I'm back up to the front door. And you do see yeah. there is a a big, beautiful, like real pickable lock on the front door. All right. Um. When I open this, chances are whoever is up there. They're probably gonna have a welcome waiting for us. So. Be ready. Yeah, be ready to uh, drop mayhem and chaos and, you know, do what we do. Alright, so you guys like SWAT team up outside the door as ALR gets his shovel. Shovel, shovel is ready. Yeah. <laughs> I think you, you like cock the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm with I'm Cal gonna... and like shift him behind me. Uh, I'm just strapped into your shield at this point. <laughs> I'm like this. Ready to heat any and all metal. <laughs> uh, that is a sleight of hand would be a twenty-three. Okay, easy enough. It takes you like four seconds to just like unlock the door. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. My, I mean, much like the stable door, it's mm-hmm. like it's a pretty run-of-the-mill lock. Well, I'm a, right. still I'm a little surprised. Pull out the hand crossbow. Door opens. Nothing happens. There is a foyer in front of you. 
I step inside. Okay. Magic eyes immediately. Alright. So you walk in. I will also step inside. I will step inside and immediately look toward the sitting room. Just I'm okay. gonna look towards the music room. With I'm looking at the magic. steps. Alright, so you guys are in this space now. Mm-hmm. Full steam sick. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so, um, as you enter the house, you find yourself in an expansive foyer with a high ceiling up to the second floor. Uh, The floors and accent panels uh, set into the architecture of this room are a fine, dark-colored wood polished to a shine. There is a large, very old, um, exotic-looking rug, sort of like set in the middle of the floor. Um, And... uh, all around the uh, the border of the room, there are display cases and pedestals containing old and interesting-looking things, such as ancient-looking pottery, a brilliant topaz gemstone on a stand, a pair of nearly fossilized-looking thin curved swords, uh, in a, like a rack with their sheaths. A couple of these items, Walter, you see, have a faint magical aura about them. Um, can I take Brom's head as it's facing or <laughs> direct it to a doorway? <laughs> Snap. <laughs> uh, there are there are several sets of armor uh, placed around uh, the space, uh, polished to a shine and positioned with various also like antique looking weapons held in their gauntlets. If we save this guy, we might have to not steal. If he's dead, it's just for Think, Walter. Focus. Our good friend, <laughs> the spy master, is up two floors above. Mm-hmm. Up there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I'm going. I, I will note that they, there are some of these things are indeed magical. Okay. Uh, Go I'm, up the stairs. Yeah, I'm going to head up the uh, staircase uh, by the sitting room. I'm going to uh, suggest that. Uh, yeah, you know, a couple of you. Do they look connected on the second floor? Yes. Okay. Um, so I mean, we'll, we'll they, probably they can't come down, right? Hmm? They can't come down past us. Do we want to check the rest of this floor first, just to make sure there's no other surprises? Uh, absolutely. They could, easily, they could easily get out before we. I mean, they, how, how? They have. They've. Clear, somebody's been in this house and probably knows its layout way better than we do. Yeah. So I will happily. Do you want me to stand guard? How about the two dragon wardens stay by the door? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna back up. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna back up. Exit, there could be other exits. Yeah, we don't I'm gonna know. back up to the door and I'm going to gently uh, pull it shut and turn back the lock. Okay, so you shut the door and you lock it behind you. You guys are kind of formulating your plan. Alar, as you like, <laughs> let your hand off the off the door. Um, there is a loud sound. As if, almost as if, like, every beam and board in the in the house, like, shifted at, at once. Welcome, foolish <laughs> mortal. Uh, well, not quite. <laughs> you hear Ezra Matt's like, welcome to death house, bitches, it's Garth Strahd! Garth Strahd! Actually, uh, you hear a creak, uh, Alar, from right behind you, like bending wood. Followed by a disturbing, almost like organic sounding like (laughs) As you turn, the wood of the front door behind you is churning and deforming. Almost seeming to boil outward as a form takes shape. Oh no. It's Jacob Marley. (laughs) It is very Jacob it is very Jacob Marley in in, uh in appearance. I believe in Christmas! (laughs) We're Marley and Marley. We are going to get sued, yeah. Uh, Jim Henson himself is going to come back from the grave. A form begins to take shape. The head, shoulders, and torso oh God, of a man... A lot of body. <laughs> of a man uh, basically are, like, ejected out of the door. His features are locked in a grim expression, and he looks almost as if, like, his human features were merely like a thin covering of flesh out of which like a gnarled wood version of his visage is like tearing its way free. He comes out and he's like, 
hanging by the torso, sort of like limply for a moment. And then the <laughs> manor again, like around you, like the whole house is like groaning. And he raises up his head and his arms are slightly akimbo. He almost looks as if he's like a marionette being operated on a string as he comes out of the door. Like and a moment later, he's, he's like, oh. I backpedal a few feet. And, uh, <laughs> you do see he appears to be uh, what is visible that is not like deformed pseudo-organic wooden doorman. Uh, he does appear, appear to be wearing like a tailored like servant's uniform. Um, he he looks like towards you guys, but his eyes are like blank and glassy. Um, the house around you begins to like sort of creak and groan, um, rising and falling in this sort of uh, undulating pitch that starts to take on a cadence, and then this figure, this man starts to uh, speak. Um, but his, like, his mouth isn't moving and, like, a vo the voice just seems to be kind of, like, coming <laughs> out from him. Um, and as you're listening, it's almost like the, like, the rhythm of the, like, the house, the noises the house are making is, like, coming in time to the cadence of this, like, puppet doorman's voice. Um, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> he suggests you try the gray stuff. Um, so he, he starts to speak, and these like these words just emanate from him in a, in a, like a syncopated rhythm with the, the noise of the, the house like shifting around you. And this voice says, Welcome. Welcome. You will make fine additions to the fold. But first, some fun, I think. A guilty pleasure. And as he's saying this, he's like gesturing puppetly at you. Um, and he says, I've got no strings. No strings on me. A guilty pleasure, I do admit. But oh, how I love playing with my food. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, pal. You kind of like respond to this, and the, the puppet sort of like. Anyway, watch your step. The first one is a real doozy. Uh, and what you hear at this point is a massive, like, groan. And you turn behind you, right in the center of the floor, right beneath that rug. You see the floor just, like, bucks, like, four feet up. Um, and a, like, a, wa a ripple wave in the hard wood just, like, radiates out in all directions, almost like somebody had, like, you know, when you throw, like, a pebble into a pond and the ripples go out. I need all of you guys to make a dexterity save for me. Really? Nope, that one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Great. It's three. Fifteen but. for me, and... Six. Five for Ronnie. Thank God. That's a twenty. Fifteen, not natural. Okay. Uh, so, 15 or above, you're good. Anybody below, you fall prone. Basically, as the floor beneath you, this ripple just goes like, and knocks you off your feet. <laughs> as you're, like, starting to recover from this, this upheaval, like, pressing yourself up from your, your position on the ground, or, like, re-steadying your feet. Right in the center, you hear kind of like a cracking noise and then another and then another and a moment later you see that rug kind of like goes floppy oh, and no. falls in oh no and all at once like board by board the entire hardwood floor of this foyer is just falling 
and you manage to kind of like get a glimpse impossibly beneath this foyer what you were looking at is like just a gaping like bottomless chasm just descends into blackness far beyond your ability to see and there are like rough stone walls descending down into utter blackness and then the floor is gone and you're falling and there are splintered pieces of hardwood just tumbling through the air around all of you as you're in free fall descending down through this floor as you kind of look up you see the walls the what was the floor of the foyer is like shrinking above you and, and you you look almost as if you're like at the bottom of an impossibly deep well the light of the room above you like hundreds of feet away and the last thing you see as everything fades into darkness that figure leans out from the door looking down into the hole that you guys are like falling away into and everything begins to go dim and black and the last thing you see are his eyes which illuminate with like an iridescent sickly yellow color and that's the last thing you remember as you all black out Ooh. Uh, and that's the end of tonight's session. So that's a no on pie, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're supposed to all for the doorman pie. <laughs> uh, me being uh, immune to sleep effects, no effect on no that. Okay, on just it. wanted to make sure. Um, okay, well, that is tonight's session. Go ahead and pass out your votes. Uh, Chat, you can't vote. Chat can't vote. Um, no, this vote is pre recorded. Anyway. <laughs> vote anyway if you want. It won't uh, won't affect anything, but maybe. Uh, the hell did I put my pencil? Uh, is in the adventure room. Maybe if somebody gets a bunch of votes in chat, we'll give them like a retroactive well, inspiration or something. I have the pencil I have uh, so thank you for joining us. I hope you guys, uh, I hope the audience and I hope you guys, the players, are like uh, into the first part of the. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm calling this uh, this little story arc yet. I have to. I've, I've yet to like land on a good name, but uh, hopefully it was a good like a good first session. Um, I'm very excited about the story. I think it's gonna be really I vote cool. For Beauty and the Beast on meth. Yeah, yeah. Meth house. Uh, meth house. Meth house. <laughs> uh, Walter goes to meth house. I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of fun writing it. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, a very fun little uh, little story arc. I hope. Uh, so as we collect our uh, our votes, I would like to put my vote in for Tragic Treehouse instead of Magic Treehouse. <laughs> Tragic Treehouse. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna split the difference. Meth Manor. <laughs> These are decent like episode titles. I do have to come up with like I uh, that that I think I explained to you guys like I'm gonna start breaking these into like story arcs. So I need like a, a name for the whole thing. But I do like. Uh, I do like Tragic Treehouse for an episode title. Um, Alright, I've got I've already got three for Walter for Pumpkin Spice, so I actually don't think it matters what the other votes are. Um, I'll tell you what I was writing. Uh, it was Walter for giving birth to seasonal beverages and probably also seasonal depression. <laughs> the ones I have is for Walter for Pumpkin Spice nonsense, Walter for Pumpkin Spice with a picture of like a pumpkin spice latte, and, and Walter for inventing basic. <laughs> Uh, so Walter, uh, will have the go again. We'll have the golden D twenty. That, that, that just says fine. This is Walter, says Walter, fine. fine. <laughs> uh, that may be the first time we've had somebody use a golden D twenty in a stroke that earned them the golden D twenty again. <laughs> and also didn't actually use it. Forgot he had they it. Forgot he had it. <laughs> Retcons. Uh, use it. Alrighty. Well, I'm uh, I'm very much looking forward to next session as you guys get to get to see what's in store for you in this uh, in this house. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> know. Good. We could we could just call in here and start over. Uh, I guess that's true. <laughs> Mulligan, Mulligan, the whole show. Uh, I'm not ready to roll a new character. Well, not new characters, just 
We are, uh... Let, we, you, right. you, you wake up. When was our last quick trading. save? <laughs> we loaded a previous save file. It's, it's we cannot fast travel. travel you, can, or... you can revert to a quick save, but the last time you remembered a quick save was right uh, was right before you met Steven the first time. So you're going to have to do that all again. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We will see you uh, next week where we will be back live. Uh, instead of this pre-recorded shenanigans, and we will continue where we left off as we see what uh, what has become of the party as they have fallen through some sort of a hell door in the bottom of the uh, bottom of this house. Cool. Uh, so thank you. See you guys next week. Uh, catch us on YouTube. Bye.